Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi, this is Jeffrey Combs. I'm Connor Trenier. I'm Dominic Casing. Nana Visitor here. I'm Andy Robinson. I'm Erica LaRose. Admiral Forrest here. And this is The Shuttlepod Show. The Shuttlepod Show. And this is The Shuttlepod Show. And this is The Shuttlepod Show. And this is Shuttlepod Show. This is Shuttlepod Show. Shuttlepod, pinkskins. Did you have a favorite of the Enterprise or the Star Trek show? <laughs> this might be a leading question. No, no. You know, no. And, and I also get the, no, but I also get the question: Which trip character did you like the best? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Shuttle Pod Show. Today we have very special guest, Michael Westmore. We'll be answering your fan questions, doing some Star Trek trivia, finding ourselves on Connor's remote island, and much more. As always, our Patreon members get a full extended version of this. I'm Eric LaRose, but first we have a message from Andrew Robinson. Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. That was great. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. And now for uh, our hosts, Connor Trenier and Dominic Keating. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, hey, hey. Hi. Welcome back. Nice yeah. to see you nice again. See After you. our big weekend. That That's right. was awesome. We had a live show uh, last yeah. weekend here at the Gary Marshall Theater in town. Shuttle Pod Show live in LA. Yeah, yep. God bless. And thank you all you people. You know who you are who thank all you. flew in from around the country. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, they came from Alaska, the Idaho's. Canada. Why are there two Idaho's? No, it's not Idaho, it's Dakota's. <laughs> you wouldn't know I've been here 30 years. There's North you? Idaho and South <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the bank this morning. <laughs> and they were checking my credulity. That's right. As to whether I was a citizen or not. Yeah, at one point I said, Dom, you're talking too much. It's starting to sound, sound a little off. I was, I was really over explaining myself. <laughs> I was like, I think you're all right. I'm not used to it. The accent usually gets me through. <laughs> As we were. Uh, but I also, we should also really thank the volunteers who were, you know, behind the scenes and really yes. helping us fill out the uh, the weekend and much, much appreciated. Thank it you It was uh, very such a much. lot of fun and uh, you were all really just joyous and wonderful and... It really hit us right here, didn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Makes uh, us want to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, we could not have done it without you guys. Yes. Uh, we actually have a volunteer here. Yeah. Oh, we do, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. You stuck around. <laughs> hey, man. Come out. Hello. God bless you, man. Uh, yes, he's uh, he's come in early for the cruise. Uh, right. Do you mind, yeah. Matt, stepping up in yeah. front of the table so we can see the washing machine? Hey, let's have a quick look yeah. at you, Matt. Oh, boy. I want to give us a twirl. <laughs> That's right. Uh, come on, Matthew. That's Jay. extra. Uh, this, <laughs> this is how wash. Oh, and he's got the t-shirt. wash t shirt. Yeah. Look at that. Hair right here as well. Mm-hmm. Lest we forget, how is Wash looking? He's not looking as good as the t shirt. Mm-hmm. I know no. that much. No. His top still looks good. Good. Yeah, okay. yeah, I know you guys keep pointing out at the top, but I keep looking there at the <laughs> bottom and it's a little brown on the edges. Aww. All right, without further ado, um, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Treks and Trekkers, welcome back to the Shuttle Pod Show. It is a huge delight and a, and a great, great honor. It really is. Um, this man's last name is utterly synonymous with the, the craft of hair and makeup, going back, to, frankly, to the dawn of time. I have a feeling we're going to hear that uh, his great-grandfather to the power of 60 did Cleopatra's hair. And I don't mean in the movie. I mean by the pyramids. Um, he's an Academy Award winner, Connor. Yeah. We are moving on up. I'm people. telling you, you know, when they throw around the word legend, yeah. they do it too much. Bit but of a legend. In, in this case, it's absolutely appropriate. Uh, we have a legend nine, on nine our Nine-time show today. Emmy Award winner. Uh, anyway, and, and a really an old chum, and it's such a delight to introduce to you the uh, the incomparable, the incredibly talented Michael Westmore. Woo! Thank oh, you, guys. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. You're looking great, mate. Did you do did, did you your own makeup this morning? <laughs> no. <laughs> I could have. As soon as you walked in, I went, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you been? I've been great. Yeah. It just... Uh, Writing and uh, you're nonstop, aren't you? I yes. mean, uh, we'll get to all that, but you've you've got a you've got a memoir that just came out a few years back. Was it uh, the Makeup Man? I now on Enterprise is when I started it. You started in two two thousand three. I started writing that. I asked my secretary for a pad of paper and I started making notes. And I wrote for fourteen years. 
Wow. And Jeez. we published it in... Uh, By hand, on a sort of legal pad, as it were. Yes. No kidding. And, and in printing, because my English teacher in junior high school told me to quit writing in print. Your cursive uh, was dread- dreadful, was it? Terrible. <laughs> so, so I had to translate all that in the computer. Wow. And, wow. and write it out. And uh, in 2017, it was published. And at, at this point, they've almost run out of copies of the book. And it... Um, it, there's there's three places where you can get them, Amazon, of Motion Picture Academy Bookstore, and the CIA Museum in Washington D.C. The, the CIA? CIA Museum? What's Why? that been about? Uh, I, we can't talk about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can neither confirm no. nor deny. <laughs> Except the books in the in their bookstore. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. I didn't know the Motion Picture Academy had a bookstore, to be honest. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I'm duly educated. Well, they won't let us in. The book's called Makeup Man, correct? Yes, yes yeah, it is. It's just pure and simple. Yeah, yes. Because that's what you are. But if we take the lineage all the way back to your, let me get this straight, your grandfather, George. Yes. George I'm, Westmore, who was born in Newport on the Isle of Wight, mm-hmm. which is a tiny little place, let me tell you. I've, I've been there. <laughs> I had a... I hate to say, I had a girlfriend there. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> One of the ten girls in town. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hi, hi, Mary. How are you? <coughs> uh, um, so he was he was Winston Churchill's uh, personal hairdresser, correct? During the Boer War, which was around ni- finished up around nineteen hundred. Yes, he was there uh, at that time. And, and uh, so then, what? Uh, how did he decide to come to Hollywood? Because that's how it all started for your family, wasn't it? Well, prior to having to go into the service, he was a wig maker, made uh, wigs for the Crown and uh, barristers in uh, and the you know in the court, right? And during that time, uh, that would have been a profession back then too. You know? it, well, it was. And, and to this day, they still have to wear the wig when they go into court. The barrister. Mm-hmm. You know, that's your, the, your attorney that represents you in court. There is, there's a div, div, divisional line in England. You have a solicitor that prepares the case. And then the, the, and the silly guy. hat guy. And the silly yeah. hat guy. <laughs> the silly hat guy. Is a, I, I always fancy myself as a silly hat guy. Yeah. 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 Visions of Petrocelli and Rumpold <laughs> at the Bailey. But. And then in 1907, he decided, 1906, he decided to pack up and come to America to find out, well, he went to Canada first, and then New York, and on down around Florida, uh, into California. As a young man? Or yes. Young, yeah. Yes, except the total number of kids my grandmother had was 18. Whoa. Uh, most of them passed away in childbirth. Wow. But uh, he, he came over, and the year later, my grandmother, Ada, she brought... Uh, four of the boys and a daughter with her from uh, England. But she had more babies along the way. You know, what the hell they were doing, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, all the way, and uh, Uncle Bud was born in New Orleans, and Uncle Frank was born in Hollywood, which I were the, the that. last two. Yeah. Uh, Purse and Earn, the twins, my dad, who was the oldest, Monty, and Wally yeah. all came over on the boat in uh, 19... 19- so- Oh, seven. George came with, married with children. Yes. Was, and, and oh, oh, wow. Um, he arrived in Hollywood around 1900 something. Yeah, it was soon after that. Yeah. I mean, after he's made his tour down and around, which took uh, a couple of years. And were they, was he, was he, how was he sustaining him and the family at that point? Doing, he was a wig, wig maker. He was a wig maker. Yes, yeah. and made yeah. wigs. Had a shop, actually, we have a photo, or a photo of it, of him standing in front of his shop in New York. Uh, and he just, I think it's one of those things where you keep going because all of a sudden you're talking about films coming and I, he, he must have been interested in doing it. Right. Um, so the silent era was just getting started. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and they were making films in New York. Uh, yes. In the beginning. And, and New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's part of the reason Hollywood exploded is because the, uh, the mafia and people were kind of taking over the business. Wow. And they went as far away from the East Coast as they could. And to that was, from- yes, and that was Hollywood. And then they wound up, because of the good weather, instead of Montana or, yeah. you know, right. Nevada or something with the heat. And it, it all sprung up here. And my grandfather opened the first makeup department yeah. at a studio 
1917. Amazing. Which is a year, it's interesting, it was a year later, or a hundred years later, that my book was published. Oh, okay. wow. wow. Yeah. Why, why makeup? Did you have uh, an inclination for that? I mean, wig making well, well, and it, makeup. It, no, it went along with it. You know, when you see pictures at that age, the, the makeup is terrible because the actors were doing themselves. Yeah. And you can, if you do look at an old film, you'll see them, you know, they'll have a mustache on and then it'll be this way or that way or whatever. Right. Um, there was a movie that I worked on years ago at Universal, which was The Ugly American. And it was with Brando. Mm -hmm. And Brando insisted on taking care of his own mustaches uh, instead of letting somebody else do it. And if you watch the picture closely, you'll see <laughs> these mustaches. He literally glued them on <coughs> cockeyed in every direction. It didn't matter. But uh, he actually made up himself and put these things on. So And they let him get away with all he was, Brando. Yeah. Yeah. I guess yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He's, he's, if you're looking at the mustache, I'm doing it wrong. Right, exactly. <laughs> but we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it, grew, it grew from oh, that one studio. Uh, it, they, they opened a second one. And Purse and Earn were getting older at that point. Uh, and so they let's, were, let's go back. George had five boys, all boys. Yes. No, um, one girl. One girl. Dorothy. Did she go into the game? No. No. Probably uh, not. She died in childbirth at a very young age. Mm. So five boys. Uh, there's your father, Monty. Yes. There's Purse. Purse and Earn. There's Wally. Is it Wally? No, Purse and Earn were twins. Purse and Earn are twins. And they were born in and Canterbury. Frank, and Frank. Frank's the last one. Frank's the last one. I saw Purse's name. I just watched Casablanca again. There's Purse Westmore. And uh, it's not the first time I've noticed it either. But yeah. It's nice well, to see it first again. did, you know, because he was Warners for 30 years. Uh, well, all of them, between Wally and Bud and the rest of them. Uh, the films that have Westmore has credits on are thousands. Oh, yeah. Thousands. I was going to say, I mean, it's incredible, the lineage. Uh, did anyone work with Chaplin? Per, per, perhaps. Do you know of? I Just know. Just out of interest? No. Or Keaton or? Yes, Keaton. No, Keaton. Yeah, right. yeah. But you watch TCM and you look at the credits at the very end. Yeah. And There's a Westmore there. Makeup by one of them. So, well, they were uh, spread out all over because uh, my, my grandfather was at Selig. And then and he did uh, The King of Kings, great movie and everything. The whole family actually was involved with that. Uh, and they, the makeup occurred because here they're doing these beards. They're doing the beards and mustaches and wigs and things. And all of a sudden, uh, they're they're doing a lousy job with their grand with their makeup. My grandfather figured that out, and so he started to do like Billy Burke and uh, some of them doing their makeup also. Mm, right. uh, and then did I read that he was responsible for Clara Bow's makeup Clara Bowes, and, my, and hence yes. the flapper yep. movement in general? Yeah, my dad was involved with the flapper movement in tying down the breasts. Uh, I mean, everybody, all the males in the that family. That was the thing, was it? The flat chested was a part of the look, was it? Yeah. Wow. Nineteen. That was the 1920s, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and the family was even big in the 20s. And as it got from the 20s to the 30s to the 40s, the family was known at that time as the royal family of makeup artists. It was all, you already right. had that. Uh, yeah. That sort and of grandfather had a crest uh, of which, and that's part of the charm of it. In fact, on my jacket. Is the uh, is that it? Is that the Westmore that's crest? The Westmore oh, crest. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah. And your your Monty, your father was Rudolph Valentino's personal makeup he, artist. They met in the commissary at the studio, and they became really good friends. And my dad stayed with him until his death. I mean, uh, you can see that picture, that image of him in your face now, in your head. The chic. Eye, well, he, the yeah. well, all of them. I mean, slicking down his hair, pointing in his sideburns. He didn't look like this before. No. Yeah, until he really started getting a role on the on the movies. So uh, my dad used to drive his boat, and uh, he he was more like a a friend hmm. than just Kidding. just a makeup artist to him. And not only that, they you know they were living in Hollywood at the height of its. You know, have you just seen Babylon, the uh, Damien Chazelle yes. movie? I got to say, the first hour and twenty minutes are delightful. Um, uh, there was I, a party. It yeah. was a, it was incredible. <laughs> 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 Uh, what a time to be, have been and lived and worked in Hollywood. Uh, it must have been absolutely exceptional. So did you know you were going to get into the game coming out, coming out of the Westmore? No, you went to Santa Barbara University. I went you? there and I was an art history major. No kidding. And I was planning on going to Berkeley to uh, study art history. 
and my uncle Bud called me. I was a, a when I was a senior, no, junior year. Uh, he called me and asked me if I wanted an apprenticeship. That takes three years an apprenticeship at the Universal, and I told him no, <laughs> I didn't want it because no Westmore had ever graduated from college. I mm. said I'm going to graduate, and then he said, well. If I wait a year, and the thing is, had he accepted somebody then, I couldn't have taken it for another, it'd be another three years. Right. So I said, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll think about it. And I'm thinking about, do I really want to tie myself down in doing that? Uh, what I didn't want was to wind up doing beauty makeup all the time, which in my later years, I really enjoyed. In fact, in Star Trek, I always took one of the ladies from the episodes and and did their makeup just to keep my hand in doing, because I was with Elizabeth Taylor for a couple of years. Mm. So yeah, I I'm wanted to be able to, you know, to do that. She's just incredible. Beyond. 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 Um, she was so nice. I, I wound up, you know, makeup artists have gotten, I want to say, a little sloppy mm. over the years. We used to have to wear white shirts and ties to work every day. That oh. was, it wasn't a uniform, but we had to do that. Right. Was it, that was it right. Then that kind of okay. faded out to where you see it today. Now the girls, some of the, the women uh, dress very nice, but most of them are of the times, dressed like the times, you know. Right. What so, years were you with Elizabeth Taylor? It was in the 80s. Mm. Right. Yes. With the hair. Uh, she was having a comeback at that point, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah yes. she's gone away for a bit. There's a famous line yeah. when she's on set and there's, there's footage of her fumbling a line. She went, oh, sorry, I'm not used to this acting business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That always made me giggle. I actually, on, on one of the movies, I played, they, there was a scene in it where she was getting made up. It was a oh. story between Hedda Hopper and uh, the, the behind the scenes things that are going on. And so they said, we need a makeup artist. I said, I'll do it. You uh, know? Really? So they actually got this type of clothes that my dad wore, mm. which was a little cap right. and the socks that came up and the knickers and yeah. everything like that. And they that gave- the, That was the sort of gaffer look back in 1930, yeah, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And they gave me a line, but they cut it. Oh! So. Well, welcome to town, honey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you worked with Bette Davis. Yes. I mean, I was going uh, like, watch this. You say better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, darling. Oh. Uh, my is, uncle, it, is it legend? Are all the stories legendary? And, and no, real? they're all true. They're all true. Uh, <laughs> my uncle Purse was her personal makeup artist for 30 some films. Whether it had an affair or not, I would <laughs> bet on it. Oops. You would. No kidding. <laughs> I would have bet on it. But I, I wound up. Uh, was he married at the time? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I wound up with her. I got a call that Betty Davis would, had requested me. And she lived in Hollywood. And I went to her uh, house. And uh, she was just, what, what amazed me was all these scratch marks all over the furniture. Because she used to use wood matches to light her cigarettes. <laughs> and here's, here's an absolutely gorgeous antique. And it was... Oh my yes. God! Oh yeah, these these were burn marks. On, oh, on like, a, like a plumber. <laughs> oh yeah. So let, let's circle back. You you go off to Santa Barbara. Oh yeah, you went to you. you that's did you, that's you, now I get off track all the time. So yeah, yeah, bring no, we'll, bring we'll me bring back. You back. Okay. So <laughs> but you did you finish college? Did you do that? I finished years? college yeah. and I graduated. Got and an I art history major and started an apprenticeship at Universal. And my first movie that I worked on as an apprentice was a flower drum song. And uh, it was beautiful because it was a big picture, and Universal was not known for doing big. Do I know pictures. that title. I don't know that I know it. It's Flower mm. Drum Song. It's a musical. Oh, it's a musical. Mm. Who's who were the stars of that one? Do you remember? Uh, mainly Asian. Okay. Jimmy Shigeta right. was uh, like the male right. star of it. Okay. Uh, they were, and they were all, all of the performers were Asian, but some were Chinese, some were Japanese, some were Islander people. And and was John Chambers Argo, was he your mentor on that film? Or? No, John hadn't come in yet. He hadn't come into the story uh, yet. List of Adrian Messenger was uh, right. the, the last picture we did before. John John left and to go to Fox to do Planet of the Apes. Uh, the show or the movie? The movie. The movie. Right. Yes. So that was probably, of, of its time, a huge prosthetic do, wasn't oh, it? Oh, giant. The first of its giant. time, really. I worked on it one day. 
Did you? Yes. And it was a day when they had so many people that had to get made up that they allowed each studio to send so many makeup artists to Fox Studios to make them up. We had to be there at like four in the morning and we had to be out by seven o'clock to go back to our own studios. Oh. And it was. It they was, let you moonlight, as it were. Yeah. It you, a, you got, yeah. But, yeah. and that's all, that was basically illegal, but it was made legal because of the. Tremendous amount of people, but we weren't making them up as uh, as apes. It was uh, the movie be uh, below or beyond the Planet of the Apes, and these were people that lived underground. Uh, so we had yeah, all these right. big. It, it was a pullover mask, like the appliances that you know that you've, you've worn. And once you had them all glued in, you basically had to glue their eyes down here. And there was a seam down the back of it. And everybody had, like from Home Depot, a silicone gun and no spirit gum or anything. Me. No. Oh. We would take and make a bead of silicone and put it together and dry it. And next. I uh, to go. We'll get it off any which way we can. <laughs> yeah. Well, sil- silicone comes apart easy. Does so, it? Yeah. Yeah, with a good rip. <laughs> so did you suck it up honey. Did, did you encounter any like on your first day at work you know sir, sir michael westmore are you at westmore not at work i didn't no i worked on the labor gangs at the uh on the back lot for two years when i was going to college at and universal at universal yeah, right. i just stolen a car or something <laughs> <laughs> but i i i walked into the sh- the shack where this guy was, and he was just, and he looked up at me and he goes, you're a Westmore, aren't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> and he said, we all have the same nose. Said, I recognize you. No, I pulled nails out of boards and swept stages and uh, did all those fun things. So this would have been about what? Is this the 50s? Yeah, late 50s. Late 50s, yes. right. Yeah, that would have nice. been like 58 and 59. So you're cutting your teeth, right? You started at the bottom of the. It's not, not like the Westmore name got you, you know, halfway up. You really started no, out. No, no. I, in fact, and what I want the union that I belong to, having to sweep stages and everything, also is the ones that made the coffee and got the donuts on the set, and that's what I wanted to do. That's, that was <laughs> you my. Be the donut that guy? was my goal. That was your goal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I found out later on uh, from somebody else that Bud had said. He can't work on the set. Keep him on the back lot. So you have Uncle Bud yes. kind of blackballed you a bit. Yeah. He's, what no, was that about? Keep him, keep me working on the back lot. Is it like you got to pay your dues? I, yeah, I don't want him lounging around on the set. So how oh old God. are you at this point? In your twenties? Yeah. No, uh, that was eighteen. I served six months in the army in, the, in a new program that the oh. army had opened up. And uh, after that, after the six months, uh, well, when I was going to college, all right. During so the you're summers. a young man, very yeah. young, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. fledgling. Um, so, well, what was your first job that you would go? Okay, I'm I'm arriving. What do you think that would have been? Arriving, but yeah. but interesting. McHale's Navy. Okay, oh. <laughs> didn't have a lot to do on it, but I became very good friends. With the whole gang and and right. over the years running into him along the way, I was basically Borgnine's makeup artist. Character. Yeah, he had a big bald spot in the back of his head that had to be sprayed black every day, <laughs> comb the hair back oh over and everything. I worked with Shelly Winters. One of my first you makeups. Did. Yes, one of the first makeups I did. Uh, they said you're you're going to do Shelly Winters tomorrow, and I'm going, oh she, you know, I'm, uh, I did. You know, you don't feel that you're that qualified to do this. So he said, we want you to meet her. So she's having her hair done. And I go in and I, I, I meet her. And uh, she asked me, she says, do you know how to do lifts? And out of my mouth, I'm trying to say, no, no. But the man that took me in to introduce me to, he said, does he know he invented them? What are you talking about? So I went home that night. And a lift that time, it's a, it's a piece of pink muslin with strings attached to it to go to the back. And you glue it on the sides of the face here, mm-hmm. and you pull it up, tie it off on the top of the head here, and you just really pull your I've face up. I've got one up. on now. I don't know yeah. if you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> you see well, the ridges. She needed, she needed uh, <laughs> six of them. Uh, six of them? Well, because her eyebrows went down like this, so I also had to glue one up here and pull it back. So there are six st- strings going all over the place. And it's, I was so nervous that first morning 
that I glued everything down, got them all pulled up and everything like that. And she looked at me afterwards. She goes, is it that easy? Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, the guy makeup artist before used to take like an hour, made a whole show out of it. Uh, so Did he get it over time? And <laughs> yeah. What well, was yes. she like? Wonderful. Yeah. She really was. In fact, we got down to the set, and uh, one day, it wasn't that, that particular day, but another one, and she goes, oh, everybody, look, Michael's got me. Pulled up so high, my tits are staring. Ah, up, you know, yeah. it's like here's the whole crew, and you're going, "Oh, thanks." You know, uh, it's, well, uh, she's going to come clear off the ground. Yeah, that's no, right. What was that show? What was that on? It was on the Chrysler Theater, which was the last Chrysler Theater. It was with giant Jack Hawkins. Oh, this was a live, uh, a live. No, it wasn't live. It was a. It was called the Chrysler. What was it? Yeah, it was, it was a television show. Oh, television show. It was a right, series. Right. Yeah, back in the fifties, they had like the the, the uh, Texaco theater. And this is all... this went into the, in the sixties. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it uh, she and Jack Hawkins though. This performance between the two of these two, she was a maid and he was a butler in a wealthy household, and they had so many scenes together that you would stand there in the camera and you would watch this thing, and you could you could literally feel this connection between the two of them and everything. But Shelley was so trained, she could be standing and telling us a dirty joke mm -hmm. and then say, we're ready, Miss Winters. She, she should say, uh, um, wait here, I'll be back, I'll finish it. And she would go in and she would cry and whatever and, blah, 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 and then cut. Fun. Okay, my back to the joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. The delusion. She was, see, she yeah. was. And she wanted me to leave Universal and go with her on a picture called Octopus. It was... Did it flop? Yeah, uh, well, I guess Ish. you know. And sounds uh, like a '70s but, film. Was it? Is that, is that no? This is this is a '60s Sixth, '60s film. Right? Yeah, and she, uh, uh, I, I told her, I, you know, I couldn't do it because I was tied up on on other things. I wasn't going to leave my steady job because she couldn't guarantee me, any, you know, any type of a job. Were you? But, uh, Say you're working for Universal. Were you just contracted to do movie, movies only. For I was Universal? on salary there That's, you were. until right. until they fired me. Uh, you know, it's that's where my job was for 11 years. Right. And um, of course, my big thing that I loved there was uh, the monsters. Oh, of course. And, uh, did you do the monsters? I yeah, did the monsters. Did. Oh. And uh, Butch Patrick and I are still friends. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And the. Uh, I would I would do Butch in the morning, and then Herman was made up by uh, Carl Silvera, and my uncle Purse actually did Grandpa. Mm -hmm. The makeup on on Grandpa was absolutely gorgeous, and it, uh, it it was just it was a fun show all that the time. A lot of fun, it, to yeah, be on. it was, and, yeah. and they did it in color. So the makeup was so integral to the the the, the, the feel and look of the show mm -hmm. and the success of it. It was uh, how do you well how do every you come every, up with things like that. Well, I'm every sorry. every day after we finished uh, getting everybody made up. No, I also did Marilyn, the daughter of the family, oh, the, yeah. the, the normal one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would go upstairs to the lab and I would make a new head. For Herman every day, and a new pair of pointed ears for Butch, and the bolts for Herman's neck. So it wasn't where you'd clean them up and reuse them or anything. No. They, they needed a new one. So that was right. my job the rest of the day was to. How much is that? process from say that time to your time when you get to Star Trek in the legacy shows. How much did that sort of improve, change, you know, d d develop? Not, 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 not a lot in the lot. actually even in Star Trek. Starting on Next Generation, we were using spirit gum. All right. And the problem with spirit gum was is we have a female alien or humanoid come in, and it was, wasn't was easy on their skin. We eventually— I can testify. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the one or two times I had to do it. Well, we miserable. went into yeah. silicone adhesive on Star Trek. So right. you guys all got silicone. We did. Yeah, that changed. And even that was And that would of... save us of the Sulaban. You can imagine using spirit gum yeah. to glue a Sulaban that all that oh, there he covered. Is. Yeah. 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 The melon head, <laughs> yeah. as he was affectionately known as. Yeah. Yeah, I did one of those. Did you ever have a hand in developing new products and um, you know, because all that stuff winds up evolving. We're talking about oh, it does. gum and, and, it does. and uh, you know, finding new and better ways to I did, do all of this. I did things along the way, not so much product-wise, but way back, I don't remember when, it was at Universal in the early, in, in gluing like a, an appliance down around the eye 
and you have a straight brush and you're trying to get around the corners. Mm. I got a pair of pliers and I bent that and the, at, the, at the metal. Mm -hmm. And I was able to go in and go around like that. Today, when you see uh, a bunch of brushes in a... There's a bent metal one. There's a bent metal one. No kidding. It's a somebody, West, West Moore brush. Somebody picked it up and, and did it. You know? Wow. And yeah. the young Mike, your Michael Jr., your son, he runs the company that, that does the special adhesive, I think. Did I read yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, when, when, we, when we finished Enterprise, I had a half a gallon of very expensive glue left over that had kind of dried out. <laughs> Let's have a party. <laughs> and, yeah. Dried out and settled a little bit. This silicone glue, which was very, very expensive. Right. And so Michael said, you know, uh, Michael actually, you know, he's an editor on Deep Space Nine. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, he, he also made all the electronics that we had, data, any electronics that were on a person. Uh, Michael, Michael made and oh, uh, wow. he would, we would make the appliances and he would insert. Was he part of things. the Borg uh, dynasty? He did all of them. Did all he really? made every, I had 32 Borg guys okay. and he wired them electronically. And Amazing. To keep from getting bored, he put this, these blinking lights in the Borg, uh, doing Morris code, put the name of his dog that's in. That's right. I read that. that yes. Yeah, yes. Just for yeah. little Easter eggs. <laughs> right. Yeah. He, he spelled out the name yeah. of his dog. No <laughs> way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I had, there was another makeup artist named Jake uh, Garber, and he would uh, sculpted some of the pieces for me, for uh, the pieces that would adhere to the head and give them something, the, a big metal piece or mm. something. And in his sculpting and the way the designs went, one of them says Westmore's Barbecue. Yes. And he, I read that. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I didn't find, he didn't tell me that <laughs> until after it was all how over. Does it, so how that, the Borg, let's go, let's, let's go with that. Uh, how does that start from pen to paper to finished product? I mean, did, do you sit down and sketch something out or? Actually, for Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, I never had to sketch. I didn't start sketching until Enterprise. Really? Yeah, because uh, Rick Berman, the producer, he wanted to see things. He was so involved. He okay. wanted to see something ahead of time. So I would have to come you up always, with like 10 always... sketches for, for Enterprise. Uh, was, uh, uh, so you sketched but, John Billingsley's look, as it were, as flocks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a story. <laughs> oh, come on, though. Come oh, on. Please oh, do. Because oh, I was going to say, I mean, we, unfortunately, you know, you never laid a brush on me. <laughs> 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 and uh, I'll rue the day. But, John, you would have had some personal contact with, I take it. A, yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was told to come up with this makeup. Want something nice and, you know. Pleasant, and because he he is a almost a happy-go-lucky type of character. Uh -huh. So I I did some sketches, uh, and took him up, and production didn't like him. So let's do a few more. So I did a few more. They didn't like him. So the weekend came around, and they said, "Well, Monday morning we want to see some more sketches." So I. My wife Marion put me in the office and said, "Basically, you're not coming out till you have. <laughs> yeah, you're not coming out till you, you know. So no I, sex for you." <laughs> I, uh, I literally uh, sketched and sketched, and they told me to even go and hire some other artists and get ideas. So I did. I hired two other guys that were good uh, artists, and they sketched them. So come Monday morning, I had this whole big book. And actually, all the things that other people, because I mean, I knew in my mind where I wanted to go, and I couldn't really transform that to somebody, you know, uh, transfer that to somebody right. overnight. And so basically, what, everything they came up with wasn't usable. And so after going through all this sweat and pain, uh, they go and they pick out like, the tenth one I did originally. Right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You hear that over and over, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You did forty. That's Vidal Sassoon commercial. I did the girl. They they got her done for the first shot. I didn't like it. I assure you not. Fifteen hours later, we gone through ten hairstyles, and then we went back to that one and started shooting at midnight. Oh, yeah. No <laughs> um, how do you come up with your designs? You have had how thousands. <sighs> Well, I don't know if it's thousands, but it could be in the hundreds or something. 
But I, I had, and I still have a book. Of them. I could have kept going with you guys for the next three years. Oh, don't tell I, us I, that. I have, I got a book of all these things yeah. with the, that I because I, I at four o'clock in the afternoon is when I do it because the phone stopped ringing. Valerie's taking care of hiring people for the next day, and I could sit down with pencil and uh, I would literally lay things out. I would put a piece of paper up on the glass. Uh, uh, the window in my door in my office, and I would sketch through there just to be able to see how things would look mm-hmm. and something else, and I'd put us another piece of paper behind it. But, uh, uh, and it, actually, I can't really tell you, although I, I did have a question one time when somebody asked me, you know, how you do it, and the uh, reply from somewhere was, do you do drugs? No. Ah. <laughs> and I said, no, I don't think I get very far uh, doing that. You know? Not until a year ago. Right. Uh, yeah. Not since I was on the banana splits. Until I got onto Enterprise. Um, uh, that cast. It, it's just what, what I would do, though. I would read the script. The writers would never tell me what they wanted. They wouldn't tell me that it, it was uh, aquatic or it could fly or it could live underground. It's just, but in reading the script, I would get the lay of the land. To be able to what direction to go. Was that freeing or was it pressure? No, it was great. It was free. free it was free. great. And then, and then at the beginning of every season, I would go to the bookstore and look for any new books on uh, reptiles, on dinosaurs, yeah. on uh, bacteria, right. cloud formations. Yeah. And as soon as I had an idea, we're going to go to the desert. Okay, I'm not going to come up with something that swims, I have to find something that lives in the heat. Yeah. And so I would go through all my different books mm-hmm. and look at these things. Plus the color is very important. Mm-hmm. You don't want to make something basically blue or green climbing around the desert. You could, If it was a lizard, you probably could add a little bit of something. But uh, or something. that's where my research came from, was my own library with all these books. So everything that I had on screen over those 18 years – Came from Earth, mm. right. including the Klingon bumps on their foreheads. I found a dinosaur book that was uh, the ver- dinosaur vertebrae that were cut right. in half, right. and you had that profile of what it looked like. Did you develop? Because the Klingons was it was next generation, as we know the Klingons today. That you developed that look because they weren't that in the original show at all. Were they? The first original one were just painted dark faces right. with a little Fu Manchu yeah. Yeah. on them. Yeah. Uh, they changed a little bit to foreheads in uh, in the movies that came along. Okay. So when I came along, well, you you weren't connected to those initial films, were you? No, no, right? No. Uh, when I came along, I uh, they wanted Michael Dorn to shave his head, but this will save time. If he shaves his head, we can just put a bunch of bones across top of his head. What did he say? And I said, oh, well, he was willing to do he it. He was going to do it. He was an extra. Right. He was an actor at that point. And he missed that out in our right. interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I never heard it first here. <laughs> so uh, so, so I, I, that's what, I, and I had basically over the 18 years, 32 different Klingon heads. And then I could, with, with just a little pad or something, I could change something around on a head to make it look different. So, uh, People were stuck with their own heads, too, like Gowron and them. Uh, we had the Gowron mold, and nobody else ever wore it. So right. certain ones were never worn. That's a nice thing. I hadn't even you know. considered that. Why would they all have the same, you know, uh, nom- you know, what's the word I'm looking at? Unless they were related. Yes, right. Yeah. They were the sisters and their brother at one time. I like that the Duras sisters. But the, uh, yeah, the, the, Duras, the, yeah. the Duras twins. Right. The Klingon forehead, the whole headpiece, it evolved. And would you, would there come a point where they're like, ah, we need to mix it up a little bit, you know, and, and change the ridges here or there? Well, so, yeah, yes. I, but I had 32 that were all original with nothing changed on them. Uh, but then I made all these little extra pieces that we could glue onto one of those heads and change it so it didn't look like that. Gotcha. But didn't have to go back and sculpt the entire but head. But ostensibly the look pizza. got finalized, as it were, apart from well, idiosyncrasies in, in, in each individual character and family trait and, right, and so on. Right, yeah, right. And then we, we finally had Michael Dorn's head done, took it down to uh, to Gene, and it just it looked like a person 
wearing a forehead. <laughs> and so I, I asked him if I could make a nose. So he said, sure. That's so hence, nice hence the nose started on Michael Dorn and from every Klingon uh, how was, after that. Uh, how was it working with Gene Roddenberry? Really nice man. Yeah. Really, and, and Rod, his son. I it's love, like, love yeah, Rod. Yeah, that's great. I was Majel's makeup artist. Whenever she worked, I, I did Majel too. Oh, so it's, Yeah. They're good people. Yes. Yeah. And, the, uh, and then the teeth. Uh, because all of a sudden nice. Michael Doran goes mm, yes. like that. And here's this dark face in the Klingon. And Bright perf- white teeth. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, good. So yeah. that's <laughs> the start of the uh, making teeth for, right. for mm. Klingons for there. Yeah. And uh, she'd never have smiled. Huh? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we talked to Armin a bit about, you know, what it was like to play, you know, in, in the Ferengi makeup. And, yeah. And the, uh, the challenge of those teeth and, um, Max actually got it the worst because he had that that sort snaggle of snaggle tooth. tooth I, love tooth. That tooth. That I love that tooth. I, I did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah, Brilliant. I, did. I made all the teeth. Yeah, uh, did you? Did you actually, really? John Chambers was a dental technician, and when I was apprenticing under him, he taught me how to make teeth. He so did. I made the Ferengi teeth, the Klingon teeth. This is, it was much faster for me to do it mm. than to have somebody else do That's it. That's incredible. Or to farm right? it out. Wow. But, but uh, yeah, I remember the snaggle tooth on Max was his character. Yeah. yeah. You know? But with Armin, uh, his head was too big for our normal one, so we re-sculpted a whole new head for him. And he also holes on the side that would hold his ears back uh, with, comfortably because right. the, the head without that little uh, cavities – uh, was uncomfortable, right? So, but with his teeth, it just didn't look right. You know, with background ones and things, and even you know, like uh, some of the the uh, Ferengi, the the we didn't put lower teeth in, mm. but we'd kind of stain them down a little bit because it just was. It took time to do that. Sure. But with Armand's teeth, there was a, a clamp thing that the dentist used to make upper and lower false teeth for people, and so they would mesh. So I made Armin's uppers, uh, and then I had a cast of his teeth. I had made a plaster cast, and then starting to lay in with acrylic and the teeth uh, into the upper. And with the holes that were here, I had to be able to, when he did the lower one, make the cavities in between. Face in between. So when he would close his mouth, he could close it. He could. It, it just wasn't like bing, bing, bing. So well, his was. They just they were clip-ins, were they? They just you know snap on, snap on, yeah, just snap I mean, on, yeah. And then I'm if they break them, they can. They sit them. I had when I was doing Clan of the Cave Bear, they used to stick them in the pocket of their robes, and I was every night I would have to when we got back to the lodge, <laughs> I would have Fish to through. Yeah, I'm there. I couldn't go to dinner until I fixed yeah. the teeth. Oh my god. <laughs> Rub yeah. a glove on. <laughs> yeah, and it's usually usually comes to me, Mike. It just I, keeps, <laughs> uh, with, the throws. You know, speaking of all this, when you um, got the job to do mask, did, do you have those moments in in your in your business in your career where you're like, well, if I do this right, yeah. Well, you know. it, it 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 was a big challenge, and uh, actually, Peter Bogdanovich and I became pretty good friends. I was, I was just going to ask you, because yeah. I, I was searching who the director was. God bless him, he just passed, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a huge film. I went in for an interview. When I when I got there, there was a makeup artist that does lab work sitting there waiting, and then I sat down, and he went in, and then he left, and I went in, and when I came out, there was another makeup artist sitting there. So we, this was oh. cattle, cattle call for makeup time. Yeah. No. How well known were you in the game then when you went? I was. You were known. Yeah. And were you known for, for prosthetics in yes. particular at this point? Yeah. And uh, on account of what had you done prior to Mars? So you've done some next-gen stuff. and uh, A little movie called Raging Bull. Yeah, Raging Bull, well, Rocky. Uh, yeah, okay, and, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so, uh, but, but that wasn't actually mask work, was it? It wasn't. Not no, like, not so, like that. You know. Not like that. It's, uh, so anyway, but, but I mean, I was just being interviewed as one of the cattle, right. but I actually, you know what sold him? I had the job when I left. Yeah. What did you so say? So the other guy here, I want to tell him you can go home now. Ah, um, ah, ah. I tell everyone that when I leave an audition. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, lads, you can all, all he g- he gave me all the pictures, all the research of the real boy. And then we chatted and we talked about it and, uh, then I had the job. It was just, my says now. Did he say so at the meeting? Yeah. At the meeting. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I had a book, uh, makeup artists at that time put together a book and I had 
pictures, a lot of pictures of the things that I've done, a lot of on television. I've got, aside from my nine Emmys, I got 42 nominations. Yeah. So yeah. I've had a lot of work, you know, in, in doing that, even for TV. Right. So uh, we went to work on it, and uh, what did we really need? We need an actor whose eyes are far apart, as far apart as you can get them, because the kid's eyes were three and a half inches apart. Uh, in his skull. Mm. So Eric Stoltz has that. No, like Eric that? Stoltz is only an inch, man. inch and three quarters. Inch and three quarters. <laughs> so I had to make <laughs> basically that. cut off part of his vision here to give me at least a two inch thing. Oh. Uh, could he see the, out of the one bit at the end? He could. He could yeah, see. He, he could. He could see pretty good. Right. Um, and that, that I mean that wasn't a problem. So we wound up doing tests, and I did a number of tests, and and. Uh, Universal allowed me to uh, hire my son to do the tests on. Mm. And so we did. I would find things that I'd need to change and whatever as it was going. Because it was a whole big full head and a lower jaw and an upper lip. And there's one photograph where he's smiling. And um, uh, yeah. the real boy. Yeah. And I made a pair of fake teeth that would uh, match up to you know, his teeth. And Eric would... Uh, he he would once once it started working, he would wear home the head that he was wearing. He would put it on and drive out, and he only wanted to be known as Rocky. Uh, That's some uh, he, st he stuff. stayed in character. And in the morning, he when went he, to bed in that. No, no, when he got home, he could take it right. off. Right. You know, it was it was he was taken out of it. Right. But in the morning, when he came in. He wore that in through the guard gate, so yeah. nobody ever really saw his real face. Wow! Wow! Uh, he wanted to keep that's it that a, way. That's a method. What was Cher like? Lovely. Lovely. Did yeah. you admit, did, did she have her own makeup artist? No, but uh, when I was working with David Bowie, uh, he was uh, she, he was Jeez. on the Cher show, and so I was I was there with him. Tell me, I didn't and, I didn't read about David Bowie. What, what, yeah. what, 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 <laughs> <laughs> tell me the Bowie stuff. <laughs> He was, in fact, it was, it was interesting when, because uh, uh, we would go to the house and do, do makeup. Here in L.A.? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. And it was like he had purple eyeshadow and mascara and a very thin, You're pale <laughs> base, you know. It, uh, it was, he was trying to be androgynous, it seems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and his wife at that time, too. It was Angie. Angie. Yeah. And uh, we did an album cover. I made them both up exactly alike, and they're you know they're facing each other in I profile. Think I think know that album cover, yeah. don't I? Yeah. God but God. he was at his house. It was like he had this gigantic room, and in one corner would be musical instruments, another corner would be paintwork, another place would be where he read. Yeah. And he would spend time going around the ways, and he would stay up for days. Yeah. And then sleep for two days. Right. It was like I mean he was just. Just an amazing, driven, amazing, uh, driven prolific. man, driven, yeah. amazing man. Yeah. Uh, and that's when he had the song Fame come out. Mm. And let me tell you, standing on, sitting on a set, listening to fame, 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 over and over again. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, my God. I hate this song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, but Dave, oh, what was David has, um, uh, for Christmas one time, he painted uh, – a series of these little pictures called Arcana was, uh, and uh, he literally personally, oh. I wasn't home, Marion was, Drop one. personally came around, and I have set number fifteen. Wow! It's uh, he made fifty fifty sets that's that he gave a, out to friends, but he personally delivered them to everybody. That's the one uh, of the coolest stories I've ever heard. Yeah, frankly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, it was, uh, and, and they had to do with their life and death. Uh, and peace, and it was uh, these little things that were that big. He blow, he had them blown up into posters that were about two and a half by three inches. Who's getting those, not inches, feet? Who's getting those in the will? <laughs> <laughs> They're hanging in my grandson. But <laughs> I throw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like David Bowie too. Uh, I'm British. <laughs> One for each. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he said you had them. He had them blown up. Uh, he had them blown up into poster size like that, mm. and they were all rolled up on rice paper. So how did you? Uh, what was the meeting? Not a so wax too lyrical about Mr. Bowie, but how did you get to be in his sphere of influence? And what was that? Uh, 
the the photographer that was going to be doing it. Right. You know, he's one who was a friend of the family, had a big photography studio, famous Hollywood uh, photographer, uh, it, down on uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, right. and so that's what started it off. And then a picture came up. He wanted me to do Man Who Fell to Earth. And I couldn't, I would love to have done it, mm. but I... I know Martin Samuel. Oh, really? Quite well. He's an yeah. old, old chum here in L.A. Well, yeah, he, I, did, he, did, he did Dave's hair. He was a hair guy. Oh, he still is a hair guy. I, I wanted to do it, but it's, I think something came up with Sly, and he, he kept me really busy on his shows. When he, we should mention, you know, you did all the Rocky movies. Yeah. One through four. Yes. Uh, what, when he, when he no, one, up, one through... Through... Three, three and five and five. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. missed four. What was the four miss? I, I was on another show. Oh, uh, well, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. Uh, th- when you joined Sly for that first one, I mean, that was an experimental piece, as it were. What what, what drew you to the, that? The budget. Well, I actually had my brother and I. We had a uh, salon down in uh, uh, Hollywood uh, where we were taking care of plastic surgery patients, showing them how to do makeup and things. That's and, a lovely. I read that. What a, what a great thing you to use your skill. Well, it was it know. was fun doing, but it's yeah. like all of a sudden I said I want to kind of get back to movies and what had, my brother would do a movie and then I would do a movie, but one of us would stay in the shop and the other would go do a movie. Right. So this little movie came up, this little fight movie, and I knew the production manager on it, and uh, it was uh, it was called Rocky, <laughs> and so they said, but uh, we want you to meet Stallone. So I went over to MGM. He was a complete unknown. At yes, that point. Yeah, he had done a few things, right, but, but uh, ostensibly, yeah. yeah. And uh, first thing he says to me, and I walk in the door, was, "How do you how do you know Frank Westmore?" <laughs> and <laughs> Funny I, you ask. I said, I'm "Michael." Well, Westmore. that's what I said. Yeah. I said, uh, <laughs> "You tell me the story, and I'll tell you if I know him." <laughs> 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 so I said, "He loved that." It, it was like told me that. He was doing a picture. He was with Robert Mitchum, and Sly was kind of a minor part in it. And they were shooting late at night, and Frank sent out for hamburgers for the little inner group. Mm. And Sly happened to ask him if he could have one, and Frank basically said, no, get lost, kid, you know. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So you never know who you're going to run into. So then I, I looked at Sly, and I said, I don't know him. Uh, <laughs> and we both, we laughed. Oh, that's, that's funny. Hilarious. But then, then you brought him a burger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On, on, when we were filming, know. it got down to the point the unions were so, and Frank, Frank was a very talented man. He was with DeMille for years. and did, His big picture was the Ten Commandments. Um, Sly came, uh, not Sly, uh, Frank comes walking into the little makeup room that we were working in. And he walked, when he saw Stallone, he walked right up to him and apologized. Oh, did he? I was shocked. I'm going, you know. And instead of, you know, beating around the bush or something like that, Sly said, fine, it's okay. He, he, I also asked permission if I could bring him in because he's the best help I can get. And Sly said, fine, mm. you know. But, that's, uh, that's big, and, that's big and that, him, because that actors... was it. Yeah, I mean, right away, I'm in the chair making Sly up, and he comes in and says, I want to apologize to you. Apparently, when Joe Pesci made it, there was just a slew of casting directors he would never have work anywhere near a movie he was associated with because they wouldn't cast him in films that he'd gone up for for years. Which, which show? Oh, Joe Pesci. I don't know. Uh, by the time he got to do Goodfellas and Beyond, okay. were, but once he'd become Joe Pesci. I think it was Goodfellas. Yeah. Mm. Joe called me and said, Mike, I would say, we were doing Star Trek. Right. And he said, uh, Marty won't hire me for the show. He, he says, I'm too old. So I said, come on over. So because You lifted him? He, he, well, no, he had, uh, you know, temples, his temples went way back in his head. We got the hair pieces. We did that. You know, I might have put a lift on him to pull back a little bit. He did a screen test with your tutelage, as it were. We walked down the alley there between the stages, and somebody filmed it for us. And he sent that to Marty, and Marty hired him. Wow. Yeah. The in Godfather Rally? He has thanked me on when he's been guesting on other shows. Really? Yeah. Did you, you shot a screen test for Joe Pesci for Goodfellas in the Godfather Rally. Is that what I'm hearing? Is that the Godfather Rally? The alley, yeah, but too, yeah, on the way to the car park from, yeah. uh, from the Star Trek uh, trailers. 
Yeah, when you make a right down that alleyway, that's the Godfather yeah. alley. It's yeah. where they shot Duval when he flies out to the West Coast to persuade that oh. director to put Johnny Fontaine in yeah. the picture. Yeah. yeah. Did you know that that? Uh, that's that not you, am I the first one telling you that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you find Where stuff you out. <laughs> you find, <laughs> find stuff out all the time. Well, I know. Did, did you know that you were onto something, or the movie was onto something with Rocky? Did you know in, in the making of it that you? No, because it was a little mudgy, a little movie. Uh, it was like a million dollar budget on this thing. And the, uh, uh, everything was really tight, you know, the shooting and everything. In fact, we went, went back to Philadelphia to do a couple scenes of which we weren't supposed to, uh, it was illegal. New York didn't want us oh, there. Right. They were, they didn't, they didn't know we were there mm. and we were only supposed to go back for a day or two. Guerrilla shooting. And do, yes. And uh, scenes where he's running and everything. Then all of a sudden we do the bird shop the, the, or the, the pet shop right. and things. And we start shooting these other things of uh, uh, out in the middle of the areas that you shouldn't go into. In fact, and just getting off the, the track for a moment there. Um, when we finished shooting one night the, uh, in the area that we were in, we, and it was a housing area, and the... Uh, girl that lived there was the daughter of the vice mayor of Philadelphia. And uh, everybody rumored that it was like a, he's like a godfather to Sly. Uh, we had problems filming where all of a sudden one night there were rocks in the generator. And uh, come to find out New York didn't like us there and whatever. Anyways, that was taken care of by the people in Philadelphia. And we continued shooting. But back here in L.A., all of a sudden, the L.A. Union calls me and they say, were you in Philadelphia filming? Yeah, you didn't have permission. And you're going, uh-oh. Is that the 705? 706. 706, sorry, yeah. And so I had to admit it. I said, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was there. They paid a $50,000 fine for me. That's a lot of money. Well, Wow. It's the West Morning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm but, uh, <laughs> cheap at the price. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Some stories. Uh, and of course, you know, I, I notable also Steve Martin you've worked with on Roxanne. Yes. Is that correct? Oh, yes. what a wonderful movie. Yeah. 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 Really true. But it was, it was one of my favorites. He yeah. was, it was so pleasant. He, but, you know, he's a comedian, but he isn't a comedian. Mm. Unless the camera's rolling and he's telling jokes, he's, he's funny. He's not a funny Otherwise, guy. Otherwise, he's really into. Right. The situation, like with me, it was noses. Yeah. We don't know what kind of nose we're going to do. So I made a quarter inch, a half inch, a three quarter inch, a one inch, uh, inch and a quarter. And we, t we tested all of them. You just kept on going. Yeah. <laughs> tested all. It wound up, I think, with a three quarter inch one. Mm. It, it, tells it, a it was the story, best. story uh, about being, they were shooting in the desert or somewhere or somewhere, some Sahuki place. And there was a bar where he, you could, you know, when you were in between takes, he, he popped into the bar to just get it out, in, out of the heat and in the cool. And there were some biker dudes standing there. And he was so fed up by now because he had the nose on. And everyone was like, oh, yeah. And they were looking over and he was like, and he was just cringing. And eventually one of them goes, hey, fella. He was like, <clears throat> why the long face? <laughs> 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 oh. I love that story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, no. it, it was fun. The thing is, with the nose, and one of the things we uh, wanted to achieve was if you're shooting him straight on, it wasn't obvious. It only became obvious oh, yeah. when he went into profile. Yeah. And yeah. three quarters worked better than one inch. Such a great film. It's a really good telling of that old story. The, the makeup in Rocky, too, I love when he's doing those commercials and it's just awful. Yeah. You know, it's just. Barely on him, and, and he, he looks he looks completely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was, you know, Sly is, is an interesting person in that I'm behind the camera with him when things are going on, and I could hear the way he talks mm. the, 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 and the, what he could come up with. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's no, distinct. Just, just, I mean, just Stinked. if somebody would say something, he could come up and turn it into a, a fantastic joke mm. and really a funny, smart man. Yes. Uh, it's uh, I uh, have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he's back uh, He's back in the in Tulsa Kings, is it? Yeah. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It's, I think he's, I, he's performing, I mean, because I literally watched him perform in all these movies. 
And uh, Tulsa King, I'm really. It's almost like he'd gone to acting school. Didn't we see or him the other day? Uh, he was at Soho House <laughs> when we were having lunch there. Was it? I didn't see him. Uh, this recently, I've seen him there. Yeah. But his, no, he him. was yeah, um, wonderful. I'm saying to work with. We were we were in Hungary, uh, filming a soccer film uh, with Michael Caine. Oh yeah. And, oh, I know. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, he, he hated to stay in Budapest. He would go to uh, Germany every weekend. Michael, no, or Sly. Sly, Sly, right. Sly would go. And one night there was a knock on my door, and he said, uh, I, I, it's, I want to do his voice. <laughs> you know, they, <laughs> I bought you something. <laughs> <laughs> and he handed, he handed it to me and said, good night. <laughs> good night. Okay. I opened it up, and he had bought me a oh, – now I'm – I'm having a mental moment. Mayor, what is it? A Rolex. <laughs> oh, a Rolex. not just something. Yeah. yeah. He no bought deal. me a Sea Dweller, uh, which was a real expensive Rolex watch. And uh, then and I had this. this Who's old, getting that? <laughs> yeah. I got. Yeah, I had a oh, Timex that, 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 that never stopped ticking. It was wonderful. So it was about a day or two later, he came to me and he said, my watch busted. Can I use your uh, he, Timex? He, 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 oh, no, he, he, he didn't ask for the Rolex. He, he wanted my Timex. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, do you want the Rolex? I love my Timex. Yeah, yeah. What a <laughs> uh, it's so easy to dive into your career with all of your amazing stories, but we never got to know where you were born or raised. So mm-hmm. tell us. Well, in 1938, I was born in Hollywood. Lived in Hollywood for a very short time because I had an allergy to the eucalyptus trees, uh-huh. and we moved to North Hollywood. <laughs> and Where that's was the a, family home in Hollywood? Do you remember? Do you... Bronson. Um, it was up one of the canyon roads. Right. Uh, Bronson Canyon, maybe? Yeah, close by there, that's yes. I mean, yes. Nice. Yeah, uh, and it was close for my father to go to all the studios that were in that's Hollywood. Right. I, yeah. My house is called The House That Trek Built. <laughs> Thank you, guys. God bless. Yeah. yeah, and then and then I from there I literally went to all the schools and uh, between North Hollywood Junior High, North Hollywood High School, L.A. Valley College. It was like all the education, and then wound up at, uh, in Santa Barbara. So the family moved on account of your allergy to eucalyptus oil, mm-hmm. and because uh, yeah, these canyons are full of uke. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and so you went to North Hollywood. Um, I couldn't help noticing, but. You know, apparently you were employed by Michael uh, Jackson to mm-hmm. put him in disguise so he could go shopping. Michael could not leave his house. The, uh, he, there was a wall across the street from where it's on Havenhurst, and it used to well, the house is still there on Havenhurst, next to across from Gelson's. And uh, there used to be a guard gate out front. In fact, I think the building is still there. And Those Michael, big properties in that. Oh, sort of yes. Neck of the woods, aren't and they? he had his zoo there then before he moved up to Santa Barbara. Like you and do. he had a candy store that was filled with every piece of candy, every name you can think of. And uh, the giraffe was there. And it's, uh, <laughs> and the, the giraffe. Bobo, the, yeah. The, the chimp was the there. Chimp there. there. But Is that Bobo? Yeah. I, well, I think I'm making that bit up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bubbles. Uh, Bubbles. Bubbles. Okay, so what was your who who suggested you to Michael that you did you and what was the vetting uh, okay. for that? Uh, Ziggy, who is a uh, built mustaches and beards and uh, wigs and things. But you're going to say Ziggy. So Bowie, Z- yeah. Ziggy Ziggy called me and said that you know that you want to come and do you know Michael we need some makeup and need some noses need teeth and that's what I uh, Ziggy made all the mustaches and beards and and I was made this Michael Jackson eighties Michael Jackson. It's before, he, it's before he moved up to Santa Barbara. Right. You know, Probably before they had the big ranch yeah. there. I mean, this was the main family house. Oh, it was there the, the, in Encino. The Jackson, right? The, yeah. The Jackson family home. Yeah. And, um, uh, but he couldn't drive out of his driveway because the wall across the street was lined with fans always. and people. Always. 24/7. Always. And so he had gotten himself, I think it was an old VW or something. And, uh, uh Ziggy made wigs and beards and stuff, and I made the different noses for him and and teeth. And he literally could drive right out. He could r- no drive pro- out the front gate. Yeah, and, and, and uh, not have a problem at all. 
because uh, the story doesn't end there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. How did or you? The, but nice. I mean, a nice, nice, nice person. Nice yeah, I was uh, standing and talking to him, and I had my hand. I was in a doorway and had my hand up like this. And all of a sudden, I feel a weight on my arm, and Bubbles is playing. <laughs> Swing on the arm, you know, and it's like, and you, you, you want to say, do I drop the chair? Yeah, yeah, right. You know? Hilarious. So I took it. I took it. And uh, I had uh, took my daughter, Michelle, with me one time. And she, this is, and she was at the age where the hair was spiked and the ends were colored and everything like that. Michael loved her hair. Really? So she had to explain all how she does it, how oh, she yeah. did it. Yeah. Sort of punky. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 Back combed and punked. But he was, again, a really nice man. Yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah, I don't doubt it. Yeah. Huge talent. I mean, you know, it can't be. Uh, how long did you, uh, did you work as his, um, you know, undercoverer? It, it, it probably was like a couple months because, I mean, once everything was built. Right. He could. He could apply. He, yeah. Yeah. And he had a makeup artist that would come to the house. And, what a uh, life. I mean, can you imagine? Blue the, and ozone. It's mix and match. Amazing. <laughs> um we should, because uh, we haven't really covered this bit. Uh, you didn't start out just getting the job on Next Gen and then becoming its, uh, you know, the empire. You you were you were brought in as a hired help, weren't you? No, I was actually just just brought in for an interview. Um, on a, it was like on a Thursday that uh, David Livingston, mm. uh, who was there the whole time, wonderful production manager, and. David said, I, I tell you, he says, we've been interviewing people for like a month now. And everybody is, tell, we ask them, one of the questions we ask them, now with the aliens, uh, who are you going to or how are you going to build the aliens? And my name came up so many times that they were going to come and have me do it, uh, if available, that David said, why don't we just call him? <laughs> to do it. <laughs> to do oh, it, yeah. you know? So that's what I did. This on this Thursday, I went in a meeting with Rick Berman and uh, Gene and David. And at that time, how you kind of like sold yourself is I had a big scrapbook about that big. And of course, I had won my Oscar by then and and uh, half of my Emmys. And they just went through the book and looked at it. And, and I said, you know, I had an interesting. I had a, a date that afternoon with Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, Whoopi did he a just one. Throws woman. Them out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopi did a, a one woman show of Mom, Mom's Mabley, and she's a comedian who had no teeth, and so I literally built gums for her oh. that would cover her this teeth. This is a real person, a real life. Ma Mom's Mabley. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know was she real or not, but okay, this was uh, a character. She. Yeah, it's a character that right. she was doing, and I had to, I had to fit them and make sure that they were ready to go to work, and so uh, I said I'll. I'll be home later in the afternoon if you're interested. So as soon as I got home, there was a, a, a message on the t uh, tel telephone mm -hmm. that job's yours. Wow! If you want it, mm -hmm. you, you, you've got it. Of course, you got to work with her again when you get, did. You do the you did the movies too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah got to work yeah. with her again, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, but um, I, I, I said, how far into shooting? I, I, I want to wait. I, I I'm not going to say yes or no now. Because I didn't know if I really wanted to do it. But then I called Barry and I, and we were talking, and, and I said, you know, it's if it's anything like the first one, it's only going to be going for maybe a year, two, or three, and it'll be, <laughs> and it'll be over with. So, And I was able to stay home because I've been doing a lot of locations, working in Canada a lot. Right. And uh, I said, okay, okay, I'll do it, you know. See where it and, goes. When, uh, when are we going to start? And he said, well, now, as I said, this is, this is Friday now. On Monday, we're going to start doing makeup tests on data. So you oh, so they hadn't. I, I okay. I got, kind of got this not right in my head. So they hadn't started really filming. The, no, the, no, the, haven't uh, done. They had to do makeup tests on everybody. Ah, uh, so and that's the, what we did that the, way. They were interviewing makeup artists to see who would be the head of makeup on yes. this show, and yeah. your name kept coming up. Yeah, got it. Uh, so, tell the Brent Spiner story. Yeah, with the, the uh, uh, yeah the the, the torso the, mold. And you had to pull it yeah, off and you had, you had to, to take cut it the off hair and... off, uh, what, <laughs> hair by hair. You, didn't, you ran out of Vaseline or something, didn't you? Actually, yes. Yeah. Did you? 
we, we <laughs> no self-respecting we of artists Brett, ever runs out of Vaseline. <laughs> Brett had a very hairy chest. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it didn't. I re- it's like, what are you going to do? I don't know. We might have put something on it. It really didn't work. Uh, it was probably why wouldn't I wouldn't shave it, I take it? No, uh, wouldn't shave it. But the there's a substance, not direct plaster, but alginate, which a dentist uses to do teeth casts. Gotcha. And that had, I figured, well, it'll release from, the alginate will release from it. And it didn't. And it didn't. Um, so put the, put the alginate on, put the plaster cast over the top of it, and then that time came to take it off. And just actually with one hair, if you go like that with one hair, it's 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 horrible. <laughs> and here's a whole chest full. <laughs> so I had these long scissors about that long, medical scissors that had a curve on the end and blunted tips. So we were able to go down and pick it up. And, you didn't have to bend those with a plier. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, yeah, I had to go down. Uh, but it wasn't just Brent. Uh, it happened with Rock Hudson. He got got caught in the back of his head here, and my uh, my uncle Purse, I think it was. It was a, no, it was Bud. It was Bud, yeah. Yeah, Bud was doing a cast on Loretta Young, a lower cast yeah. to build legs, and it got caught in a crotch air. <laughs> and he, he had to go down there with the same scissors that I did. With a blowtorch. <laughs> now be very, very careful. What's the, <laughs> the worst job you ever had? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, so, I mean, all those years on Star Trek, at what point did you know that uh, this was going to be a lifelong career, as it were? It didn't. You didn't? No. It was, always... it was, it was like, well, we got started into it, and... Uh, we got moving along, and you know, you get into the third, fourth, then a rumor starts that uh, maybe there'll be another show called Deep Space Nine, and then all of a sudden it becomes a reality, and then part way through Deep Space Nine, <laughs> there's going to be another show called Voyager, mm-hmm. and it becomes a reality, and then Enterprise yeah. comes up. It becomes a half reality. It becomes a half reality. <laughs> Did you have but a... Should have, shouldn't have. It was just Manny Cotto had taken over. Yeah. And Manny and I talked about recreating a lot of the characters, which I did for uh, uh, for Enterprise. And the... Uh, yeah, we need to talk about your characters, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it just went on and on. And then I got a phone call one day, and Rick said, we've been canceled. Just like that, huh? Just like that. And At least he asked me to take a seat when he called me. <laughs> he no, said, well, I was Are already you sitting, sitting down. Yeah. 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 It was, uh, I want to say, I. I it, Do you half know what that said, story was about our cancellation? Did you, uh, in the back of halls, no? Just, no. No. Well, I know the ratings were probably down. It had to have been because if the ratings yeah. were up. We were still UPN's top show, and but they, uh, they were flailing, weren't they? Yeah. It was a network. And yeah. You know, we've covered this. It was the end of an era of network TV, really. Yeah. Know? Did you have a favorite of the Enterprise or the Star Trek show? <laughs> <laughs> this might be a leading question. No, no. You know, no. And, and I also get the, uh, no, but I also get the question: Which trip character did you like the best? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who was your, who was your favorite straight makeup male? Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> There Between there Star Trek and the uh, characters, and they say, "What's your favorite one?" And I, I literally, I, I say, I loved all of them because mm. every one of them was a challenge. These things did not exist, so I, I mean, they're they're like all my babies. Yeah. I want to say the, the the Leonard Crowfoot when he played on uh, Next Gen, it was. Like one of the firsts of having to deal with an entire body yes. and appliances. Uh-huh. He couldn't take a pee, could he? He could not pee because if I built bicycle pants for him that totally glued him in. He had a chest piece because his chest was too human. And on his head piece, it had no ears. It had no nose. And the mouth was down here. And so he couldn't hear well. For 500 bucks He a couldn't week. eat. <laughs> yeah. But when you figure 
what he was required to do. Yeah. That where are you going to find somebody like this? Mm -hmm. He had muscles on muscles (laughs) to be able to do things that the a normal person, even as a bodybuilder, could not do. He could stand on one leg and not move, and that those positions were used in in the in the episode. Um, and then on top of it, he had contact lenses that didn't weren't really comfortable like some of the other ones because they were hard and they were uh, uh, gold, All like right. we had painted his body. Mm. But and then we'd work actually work him every other day. He couldn't work every day because we couldn't get him out in time to put him back in. Turn around. It took two hours to clean him up at night. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, So that was, uh, I think the the name of the show was Offspring. Um, Did he ever complain or was he just a trooper? No. No, that's what I'm saying. Also, he never complained. God bless him. And and, uh, we (laughs) used to, in fact, we couldn't get the paint off of him. (laughs) we couldn't get his makeup off that one must night, be lunch, Jesus. surely <laughs> <laughs> no we are not going into grace <laughs> we were we, we couldn't get the makeup off him one night so i went home and with mary and i says oh my gosh we can't get the makeup off she says have you tried a loofah sponge i says i don't have one i do well, she never got it back. She, she, she didn't want it back. <laughs> oh, that was trash. Uh, we had to take the loofah sponge and, like, alcohol and scrub his body down oh, my God. whenever we wanted to get him out of it. Oh, my word. Imagine being at hour nine out. and you're like, I cannot feel like I have to go pee. Oh, my God. No. I mean, you got five he could, more he hours. Oh. He would not eat or drink the entire shooting day. Jeez. I'm not sure the union. would they? Did they know? I mean, did they no, know? Did it. they give a Well, he crap. wouldn't fight it. It was good money. and All right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I never, honestly. Um, so, what else? Manny Koto, yeah. I mean, uh, it was a shame, wasn't it? Because he was really, you know, a new, not to, not to take anything away from Rick and Brannon for yeah. running these shows for so, so many years. But it was a new blood, a new, a new, you know, new life for, for Enterprise. And we had a lot more years in us, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot more. I had sketches left over. No. no kidding. Yeah, and Bob Black, Bob Blackman was brilliant in his costume making. Yeah, yeah. it was, uh, and he and I were very close to the point of Bob would say, "We're going to have a Cardassian, and it's going to be a woman." So just to let you know that ahead of time, so we could make a plate of scales that he could take and lower her th- that you know, right. or mm. that I would tell him with the Cardassians, I had to tell him, "I'm going to put shoulders on these characters, so you can't have a." A, a tight collar on him. Uh, but he and I coordinated like that the entire time. Was Bob on it from the get-go pretty much? No. no. There were two other people. Bill Tice was on it the first one, and Dorinda Wood, who designed the first Borg, mm. was uh, on the second season. And then she went back to doing features. I don't think so. Okay. You know, it, uh, How long Bob was there from what? He was probably there for 16 years. Okay. Mm. And I was going to say, I mean, there was, a, there was a core group of you that had been – Together on that show, 16, 17 years. There's like 20 people. No kidding. Yeah. That must have been quite something. That uh, were still there at the end. Yeah. From no beginning to from end. The, from the crew. It was, uh, I'm sure it was a very moving, you know, no. but, end I of mean, cha- uh, chapter. Not only myself and uh, such a joy it was to do it. In fact, it was a whole career for me. I was at Universal. I was independent. And, and then, then I had Star Trek. Each one of those Star are separate uh, jobs that I had over the years. And it... Um, the people today that I work for me, and I would hire around 100 people a year coming and going, it seems so many conversations uh, that start with, oh, I remember the good old days. The good old days was working on Star Trek. Oh. Yeah. I have to say that the makeup trailer, certainly from our experience, was just a really happy, joyous place. Every, yeah, all the time. It really yeah. was. Yeah. Everyone there, everyone in the trailer was just delightful and it was a safe place, safe place, yeah, and, and you, in the hair, mate, and in the hair trailer too. It if, was. If you got to do your makeup upstairs, there was a fellow named Steve that was up there, makeup artist, a wonderful man, and he was one of Bob Fosse's dancers. Oh, broke wow. his leg, couldn't dance anymore, became a makeup artist, uh-huh. and Steve loves show tunes. So come four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> is... Hello, Dolly. Dolly. <laughs> yeah. And then make a person come to me and say, 
does Steve have to turn that on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And I said, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. Does. I love it. It's a must. You know? Yeah. Uh, what's your preference, uh, film or television? Uh, I don't care. You don't care. In fact, that's... Is a, there a difference? Paramount, there shouldn't be. Mm. There shouldn't be. And that's why they, Paramount came to me one time and said, we're going to do a movie, so get rid of your TV people and bring in the uh, <laughs> feature mo- makeup artists. And I said, you got to be kidding. I've got guys here that have won Oscars, that have won Emmys. They're fantastic because... Who would that everybody everybody rotates. They, they, my help yeah. would rotate. Sure. And so I said, I've got, I'd hire these same people if we're doing a movie. Right. And they said, okay. Who would that sort of note come from? From the, t- from the it top? Came, it came, I don't know if it was above Rick or under Rick right. or whatever. So, but it was, when I first heard it, it was like. Well, good you know? for you for standing up and going, you know, you don't know. What oh, I'd take them right, right from TV and take them right into the movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We had some be- beautiful Brad and uh, Jeff. Our guys were terrific. And Susie, Susie. I'm, st- I'm still friends with everybody. Yeah. I just heard from G- Jeff. Wished me happy Valentine's Day. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. Now Jeff's back east, though, isn't he? Uh, no, he's back here now. He's, oh, is he? Yeah. yeah, he'd gone to St. Louis, and uh, he moved back out here. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I had very, very talented people all the time, and that's what that's what gives a look to Star Trek. Is yeah. if you're watching, whether you're watching on a small screen or a big screen, there's still quality there, and it's motion picture quality. It really yeah. is. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. No kidding. Of course, our makeup took five, uh, seven minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little spray gun. Yeah, that was you. Little mascara. The, uh, you introduced the, the, the. I loved it. The little little bowl and. Sh- Fill it up with mm-hmm. the good stuff. <laughs> Made me look beautiful. That's right. Come on, Jeff. <laughs> Can, Can you I, cover uh, this? Uh, yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> Can I ask you about um, Jolene's eyebrows? Sure. <laughs> yeah, who fought you on the eyebrows then? I, they, they, from production, they were creating all the characters. And they thought to make Jolene different, that she would just kind of have normal eyebrows. She'd have the pointed ears, but normal eyebrows, and she was kind of tan as opposed to having the yellowish tone that uh, Vulcans and, and Romulans could have. And so I, I got to the point myself where it's, it was, was really bugging me. So little by little, I had uh, Suzanne, because her eyebrow, normal eyebrow, this little tip that's out here, I had her start to raise this. Mm. Little by little by little, <laughs> till we find near the end, we finally got it up. It was, it was more, of, but she didn't look like a Vulcan, especially if her hair was covering her ear. Yeah, she, she'd look like a human, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, I mean, I know we have. There wasn't, you know, when we started getting notes, <laughs> when Rick started getting notes, one of them was, "Does she have to have pointy ears?" Yeah, <laughs> that came from, oh, from CBS. Oh, the, no, UPN or, uh, at that UPN. point via via CBS. Yeah, yeah. or yeah. she's a Vulcan. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, that's with the eyebrows. You right away, you're sold. Yeah. Right. But without them, you look like a human. Did right. Jolene ever sort of have any say? So, did she ever comment on her? She, she didn't just care. Never even noticed. No. She didn't care. No. God bless her. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to get Joe on the show. So is she still here? She's in town. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, she yeah. Was, she is. She, uh, they live in Brentwood, I think. Um, she married a chap that's huge in uh, in the music live industry. Um, he's Live Nation. Uh-huh. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Jolene, if you're watching, I, I'm sure yeah. you are. <laughs> Come yeah. on over. Come on over. Come on over. Joe. <laughs> uh, you've got stories. In the neighborhood. Yeah. In the neighbor. Did I hear you have your own makeup line? or? My daughter does. Oh, great. Oh, Mackenzie, how is she? My daughter, Mackenzie, has a line called uh, Westmore. and uh, That's convenient. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mayor, what's the whole title? Westmore Beauty. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, my daughter has a line called Westmore Beauty, and she's on QVC. And, oh. And she sells millions of dollars. Worth she of really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's been doing it for a number of years now. Uh, and she has these. In fact, her, her makeup was so good that I, I was wearing her makeup when I was doing Face Off. Uh, it's all the products she literally is involved in to make sure they work. And they're of quality that not only for uh, street makeup, but for the studio. They could wear it. That's a plug for them. You know, it's (laughs) remarkable what you, the Westmore family, has done through generations is to keep it in the family. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, your son. Yeah. Mackenzie. Michael with his glue. And what really took off is somebody, he designed this new hair dye that's a cake that you can put on your hair. And some girl bought some and she went on TikTok. And all of a sudden, there you go. Oh, all of a sudden. Oh, all of a sudden he goes, oh, my God, we've got 50 <laughs> orders there today. You know, they're normally doing two or three. It was like, and it hasn't stopped. This girl comes on and does that, you know, all the time. Wow. Yeah. Mackenzie was an actress, too, wasn't she? Mackenzie was in Picard. Yes. For, for, Just now? Uh, yeah, yeah, but. We, in season one or two? Yeah, was, no, uh, yeah, I don't remember which season it was. But the one show she didn't but, act on was our show, was it? No. She, it wasn't no, no, no. She was doing a soap. Opera at that yes. time. Passions. Passions. That's I right. used to watch that as a kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, as a kid. <laughs> I just binged it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, that was interesting. Yeah. We were we were home having dinner one night, and the phone rang, and we said, well, "Who's going to get the phone?" You know, we're eating dinner. All of a sudden, she picks the phone up. And she goes, "Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh." Oh my God! I got the part. I've got to leave for Paris. <laughs> we need to get my passport ready. So that's that's how it oh, all started for Americans. Her. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, another notable thing is that you all have first names that start with M. In yes. Michael and Monty, a lot of them in, in the middle, it's a G. It's, and no kidding. And that's <laughs> yeah. a family thing, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I think Marion, your wife, said it was something to do with uh, you, something you would look good on on a monogram or something. Or what did you say, Marion? It looks good on my <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I did want to ask how you two met. You have a, a story about this. It. Yes, we're both. I was doing the makeup shows, and I was ahead of the. There was a couple of makeup artists. I was I was running it at that point, and Marion was basically Edith Head's one of her models of just a couple of girls, and they would. All wore the, all the girls wore uh, Edith's heads designs from famous movies that she had uh, done. So we're working together, and I she seems to me like she's a little stuck up. So I wasn't bothered <laughs> to talk to her. She's still here. Oh, <laughs> and, but I can hear you. <laughs> but I, in, in a way, I I can't blame her because as I as I mentioned, the uh, uniform of the day for makeup artists was a white shirt and a tie. I hated that because I had to work in the lab and everything. So I talked my uncle into letting me wear an ascot, which I wore in college. And I had graduated from my Chevy to a Triumph, uh, and then a Jaguar, and then a Jaguar, moving up the ladder. And uh, she thought I was another one of these playboys in Hollywood, so she wouldn't talk to me. So we never talked. And finally, one day, I was sitting in this makeup chair backstage, which rolls out to where we do a demo uh, for the tourists, and the curtains part. And I'm reading the paper, and the paper's like this. And uh, reading the Wall Street Journal. And the all of a sudden, the curtains move, and I drop the paper. And literally, we looked at each other, I think, for like the first time. And my first words out of my mouth were, do you want to get married? Really? No she way. was wearing a wedding dress that Rosemary Forsyth wore <laughs> in a Jimmy Stewart movie called Shenandoah. Mm. Oh, and yeah. she said... Let me change my clothes and we'll talk about it. So she came She came back and I had a little sailboat then and I had to go to, out to Van Nuys to pick up a part for it or something like that. So I'm not going to bra brave this saying, do you want to go out on a date, babe? You know, I wasn't going to. I said, do you want to go with me to the sailboat shop? You know, <laughs> so we did. We drove out there okay. and it was almost like, and then I asked her out. And it's like from that moment on, except for me having to go away to location once in a while, we'll be married 58 years this year. Oh, wow. We haven't wow. been apart. Oh, wow. We haven't amazing. been apart. Last in fact, a, the a, um, lock uh, shop, I, I have to thank them because like one of our first dates to a restaurant down in the uh, marina, uh, they locked my keys in the car. And 
The valet people? The valet did. And so we were there till like 1, 1 30, 2 in the morning. It had to have been later because the restaurant had closed, but they couldn't close it with us sitting there. And, it, uh, finally and you were waiting wife, for the locksmith to come well, and, and get your I car. Well, I tell you, the biggest thing was is Marion always told me she had to be home by midnight. Oh. That, oh. that was her dad's. Oh. She had to be home by Nothing midnight. Nothing to do with a pumpkin or anything. No. Well, <laughs> it's it's like three days ago. She tells me that wasn't true. That was just a rule I made up. <laughs> <laughs> that was my get out of jail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about that? Fifty-eight idea. years. Congratulations, guys. Hey, yeah. Really. Congrats. <laughs> so we understand you've got the boys some presents. I have, and let me tell you, it weighs a ton. It's, uh, wait. Look at that. And it, it, it's literally my pleasure because being here and doing this, to me, it's not an interview. It's it's a reunion. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. When we've known each other and, and the way the Star Trek family is, it's always a reunion to me. Yeah. It truly is, mate. It's family. It's true. It really and they're is. autographed. Oh, oh. Michael. Sweet. Oh, look at that. And we made the cover. Well, Jolene did. <laughs> Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, oh, thank you. I'm absolutely. That's uh, bless you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Yeah, bless thank you, you, darling. That's really cherished, really. Um, and in my time working with Connor, Trin hmm. uh, hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Best chapter ever. <laughs> Is that uh, that's Lou Ferrigno? 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 No, 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 no. Is it not? No, it's, it's, tell us. It's, uh, his name is there. I have to put my other glasses it's, on. It's another one that I forgot. Right. Uh, yeah, he, he's a big, big actor. You're right. In his day. Well, God bless. Great. I can't wait to get into that. I'm, uh, I've am i been, I need a book to read and that's going to be it. So. Well, what's nice about it, it, the way it's laid out. And in fact, uh, my other project is based on this, starting in page one and going through it. So uh, you're doing a, a documentary at the moment, aren't you? With we, David Zappone. Yes. Yeah. With David and... 455 uh, Productions. Yes. Shout out. Yep. Uh, David, of course, is um, huge, done uh, all Shatner's documentaries, uh, The Captains, and mm -hmm. that's a piece. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, I love the Deep Space Nine one. Uh, you've been, so you've been sitting down with them quite a bit recently, haven't you? Actually, for the last year. Because what we're doing, we're just going through interviews now. Right. And telling stories like we are here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I've got a zillion photographs from, you know, a baby picture on up, which we're going to yeah. go through. And uh, Jonathan West, if you, the director yeah. of photography, yeah. he's actually our cameraman. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Right. Wow. And, uh, and he's thrilled with it. And the thing is, before we started, my uncle Frank uh, wrote a book called The Westmores of Hollywood. And it's the family from England up until about 1962 or three, because mm. I know when Mary and I got married, it's, it's in that book. Uh, and I was one. Between that and uh, my book here, it's like they have him, him, Lolita Facho, and, yes. uh, and David's partner, and uh, they've, all, they've all read the books. So it's, what's interesting is like being here today, they shout questions out as I'm talking. They'll, right. They shout questions out. How did it come out. about? Did they just approach you? David did. David did? David did. I was doing the uh, uh, Voyager uh, right. show that he's doing. Right. And after I got done talking, he came up and he says, hey, will you, do you want to tell stories? And <laughs> yeah. I said, sure. Got an idea. Yeah. We're still waiting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Apparently we're next. Uh, wow. What's your experience? I mean, is your, is your house stuffed full of Star Trek memorabilia and, and fan stuff and... I mean, are you there, there are pieces around. Pieces, yeah, it's almost yeah. like a little museum. Yeah. Uh, it's like I, I have boxing gloves from Stallone, and I, a cast I did of his face when he was 29 years old. Oh, wow! wow. I cool. have I have that there. The plaster one is I had it. In, I had a museum exhibit in Santa Barbara in uh, 2017, and uh, I, I made a copy of this in Japanese rice paper from the first page. I had it printed. The first page from Rocky, the original script. Wow. And uh, I have that. And uh, Steve Martin's nose. <laughs> you still got that? One oh, of them? Yeah. I, have, I have cases full of the face casts I've taken over the years. And uh, De Niro? De Niro I have. 
it's. What do you think? Well, I mean, you, are you going to give them away to, to, to the motion picture ma- uh, I, museum well, or something? Or Well, I would like to. Yeah. I mean, you know, they probably aren't interested in the TV stars. Uh, All right. But uh, I think the Emmys have another they have another, another yeah. organization that That'd does that. Great. But I would like to because I would say these things you'd like to, yeah, for you know, instead of trying to sell them off somewhere. I mean, yeah. just, you know. Yeah. In fact, I have every one of my Star Trek scripts. Or the 18 years. No kidding. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes, those I did sell off. <laughs> did you? Yes. You did. I, I did, yeah. I did. Santa Barbara wants, wanted me, there's a special organization. I mean, what they collect in Santa Barbara is paper. Mm-hmm. Other universities collect different things. Mm. So, uh, I don't know. That's how many? That's got to be hundreds. Yeah. Where are they? In the garage? Yeah. <laughs> Dominic, <laughs> yeah. when are you guys leaving town? Yeah. I won't but, give him. I won't give him your address, Mike. Yeah. But the thing is, we went script wise. It's six hundred and like twenty five. Yeah, they, shows that I designed. No kidding. Yeah, Dominic. Michael I mean, Dorn's I mean, in half of them. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, Should we take some fan questions? Yeah, let's do it. You guys ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, Fran Castile from Patreon asks, of all of his faces he has created, which one is his favorite? Having a favorite is difficult, I would say, to pinpoint one because I've really enjoyed every, every project I got involved with. I just get into it and to see how I can make it grow or change. Uh, of course, the biggest challenge would have been all the different aliens and humanoids on Star Trek. But it's um, anyone in particular. I mean, there's people like, like Elizabeth Taylor. Was a, of course, she didn't wear any rubber, but uh, <laughs> she was supposed to. She was supposed to be in a list of Adrian Messenger and... Her friends talked her out of not doing it. She was hired, supposed to be in London on a certain day, didn't show up because they said that glue they glue it on with is going to hurt your skin. So she stayed in Europe and disappeared. But she was supposed to wear be an old seaman in List of Adrian Messenger. Well, I don't know. Wow. But uh, there's the people like that. Stallone was wonderful. Uh, each Each person has their own personality that you learn to work with and live with. Even though it's a boxing film, De Niro was totally different personality than Stallone was. Yeah, mm. you know. Yeah, that's a, that's one of the the a master uh, makeup artist or hair person has that chameleon esque ability to just slightly mold themselves to the to the actor in the chair. Mm-hmm. And I I really admire that because not all actors are easy. Yeah. You know? But I, I also I I considered myself. I'd say my whole life that. I'm an employee, and I know makeup artists that don't think they're employees. Right. You know, but I'm right. an employee, and my job is to do the best job I can, communicate with the director, the actor, and everybody, and come up with a happy medium for it. Yeah, I think as actors, I think we, you know, the, the nice, good ones think of themselves also as I'm here as a part of a team, and you know, I'm going to do my bit to the best of my ability. Michael Caine. Yeah, really, just a just a team uh, player. Really? No kidding. Yes. It comes, uh, you know, uh, there's a there's a gratitude there that he, he came from quite an ordinary background. Mm-hmm. You know, Morris, what is his real name? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. his dad said, you know, I don't want you going in that game, you know. But I'm Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> his dad, I'm Michael Caine. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's nice to hear. Uh, yeah, he's a real gent, isn't he? Yes. And, um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot to be said. You know when you work with people that have that mindset rather than, you know, Something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jill Sheets from Patreon asks, what is the best thing about being a makeup artist? You know, one of the, <clears throat> the greatest things about being a makeup artist is the people that you meet. Uh, and being able to use your talent to do, whether it's uh, beauty makeup or uh, wharf to do. Mm. And I was trained to be able to, as my, luckily enough, in my three-year apprenticeship, was to learn all phases of makeup, mm. where today it's almost all the different phases. They're specialists for it. Mm. One one person they don't have it anymore. Where uh, 
I was literally paid, and I'm $75 a week to start, um, and working with the top makeup artists as my teachers, you know, but just literally enjoying it and never waking up going. In fact, on my 18 years in Star Trek, I never woke up one day thinking, I hate this. I don't want to go to work. Oh, that's wonderful. And four in the morning. I, at four in the morning, yeah. I just knew where every Starbucks was from <laughs> Encino <laughs> to Paramount. <laughs> Starbucks <clears throat> saves the day. All right. Next question. LM from Patreon asks, has there ever been a time that you had to completely change what you were doing due to an allergic reaction to the makeup? N- knowingly, I can, I can only remember one instance where... And we didn't change it. There was an episode on Star Trek where it was a little girl, and Jonathan was the star of it. Uh, and she had orange hair and an orange face and sparkles. Mm. And on the ends of her fingers, I built fingertips that uh, went about an extra inch longer. Yeah. And I, I know, and I, I did them on purpose, and they were they were clear, but I put the paint over them and. On the set, uh, Marvin Rush, who was the director of photography one time, or the first time, he said to me, Mike, powder her fingers down. I can see through them. I'm going, Marvin, <laughs> you know, this is, that was plan. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> it was, um, was but funny. the makeup, I had been getting the same makeup from this laboratory all the time, and they made me up a batch of orange and put it on uh I think her last her name was Nikki, and she would say to me, "This kind of burns a little bit." I'm saying it can't burn, you know, it's imagination, whatever. So one day, one day I said, "Shut up, kid." Well, yeah, it's, it, that's what it was. Yeah, I said, I said, put some on me, and they put it on. I'm going, "Oh my God, this stuff burns!" <laughs> <laughs> but it, it never really burned her skin. It just really made her itch and, and, mm. and heat up. But it's like I didn't have a substitute. She she fought her way through it. She I'm just dealt with it. <laughs> Put it on anyway. You're an actress. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, great. Um, Mars from Patreon asks, do you have any supersti- uh, do you have any superstitions or rituals that you've de- developed that help ensure a successful working session? No. I tell you what I do do is I have two refrigerators in the garage, and I have to go back two times to make sure they're shut. Do you? Yeah. So What's in there? Food. Food. <laughs> Just I was going to say no yeah. heads. No, 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 no. no I don't. I don't no, I work on good yeah. fellas. I, I don't. I really don't have any superstitions as such. I just, I'm, and I'm glad that I that I don't because you know. But the, they have to get the stuck. fridge doors in the garage. You know. Yeah, but I have to go back a second time to make sure. Just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy Ward from Patreon asks, you must have created many firsts in technique during your career. Which innovation are you most proud of? Mm. The bent brush. The bent okay. brush. The bent brush, you know. Yeah. Uh, the other, other things I did was I had a book on Norman Rockwell, big coffee table book. And in going through it one day, there was big, big, big pictures. And I got a magnifying glass and I went over uh, the pictures. And I says, I'm amazed because there's blue and there's green, all these colors in skin tones. And that changed my way of thinking about uh, makeup application especially when you have a rubber piece and you have to match this piece mm. into this piece over I mean just the normal skin over here that uh, to me it was a uh, oh and then, then I went and got uh, makeup like this made up for me and one particular one was almost like a brownie rose color which was not available in the studios at all and they had I had a big tub of it made up which lasted for years little things where you could stipple it on the on the chin and on the nose and a little on just to break up the face, and it was uh, it was just a beautiful color that uh, uh, now there's all these different colors that I had to play with and think of then are available in the uh, mm. makeup stores. Isn't that amazing. Yeah. So you would create that palette 
from you know to to get there. Yeah, I just think that's great that you that's get great. inspiration from a Rockwell. Yeah, right. Painting. I get a lot of inspiration. I would it would come to me at four o'clock in the morning. I would wake up. I guess my mind was playing with it the whole time. Uh, on on the movie Rocky, um, th- that there was a uh, right here in his chin, there was a wrinkle that I couldn't uh, get rid of, and I couldn't think of how I was going to get rid of it. And all of a sudden, actually I, on on Sly's face. Oh, excuse me, not on Sly, not Rocky. Oh. On on the movie Mask. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning that there was a wrinkle across the chin here that any time he moved, I couldn't get rid of. And for some reason, I thought of why don't I just make another little like band aid out of the foam latex right. and cover over that area? And it was the last thing I needed to do to solve my situation on that movie. So but, that was from. So you've you've made a uh, you've made a sculpture, as it were, and that, that every time you've molded another piece, it would always have this wrinkle. Is that? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It just because the the chin cut off right across here, right? So it always did it. So, yeah, so that was the just that little little band piece, yes. <laughs> and that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Jackson from Patreon asks: Is there an embarrassing mishap with makeup that occurred during filming that made it on screen in your career? If so, where do we look? Mm. <laughs> embarrassing mishap. Well, I would say the one that sticks out in my mind is as far as I try to avoid those things from <laughs> later on <laughs> in my career. <laughs> but in my in my first But if you're an ass. <laughs> yeah. One of my first movies was a McHale's Navy mm. movie. And the, I was with another very uh, t- talented and uh, uh, adept makeup artist. And he says, make sure you always carry a hair cloth. You know, like what they put us on the barbershop with you in your bag. And I go, why? Because then you have something to lay down on on the grass whenever you're not doing anything. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're shooting and they're shooting. I can't think of the actor's name now. But he, he had a fake mustache. I had a fake mustache on him. Vince was the makeup artist I was with. And he says, don't worry about it. They'll call you if you need something. I said, okay, good. So... I go up, I decide it's bugging me. I need to go up because my, my mother was a hairstylist and she kind of trained me on set of when to go. I'd, I'd feel a finger in my back and uh, that meant go, time to powder, <laughs> you know. So I go up to look at, and they're doing a big close-up like this on this guy. And the mustache that I put on him, it's holding here and here it's hanging over his mouth. And I'm thinking, oh my God, should I tell anybody? And I was I was too scared to actually bring the subject up. Oh, uh, in the latter days, I've caught little things like that, and I'll tell the director, and they redo it. But uh, I'm thinking nobody saw this, nobody said anything. So I go to my uncle Bud, and I say, "Can I go to Dailies tomorrow? Dailies is where they show all the film from the shooting the day before." And I go to the Dailies, and here's this big giant screen, and everybody's sitting there. And damn, that mustache is hanging. And he's talking and it's flapping around. Flapping around. Nobody said anything. (laughs) And if you go to the theater, it's. Mikhail's Navy. (laughs) Mikhail's Navy. His mustache. It's still sitting there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I think that was a good learning thing for me, too. well, obviously, yeah. yeah. It's your, it's your, well, you one, speak of, up. one of the things that I found in, in fact, this even happened on Star Trek, where it's called Video Village. Mm-hmm. The makeup artists are not standing by, and they're sitting back far enough away where they can't really even see the actors and the actresses, and and they're waiting for somebody to call them mm. that, that, if they see it. Mm. I was not trained that way. So whenever I would go to the set or somebody would say, well, so-and-so has to go or would you stand by? And I would be right I, – I was taught to stand right next to camera and watch the set. And if you see something – if you don't see anything, that's fine. Right. But then I would see my whole team kind of sitting there. And I, I even tried to get rid of it at one time. Uh, but uh, – they didn't want to. They wanted to, to keep it. You mean Video Village or? Video Village. Right. Yeah. Well, they ended up relying so heavily on it. It's where all the monitors are for, for, for uh, whoever's cousin in Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's where they, uh, it's where, and of course it wasn't a thing 
I mean, fulfill me forever. You, you, had the, you just you didn't have that sort of uh, you know, accessibility. But, but then I, they, they came to rely on it heavily. Heavily, that's the problem. They relied yeah. on it heavily. And when I was there, I would be standing right next to the camera. And Brad Jacobian, who was first AD and production manager. Was he first AD? He was Back first in the AD day, in, in the beginning. Yep. And he would always make jokes about it. About, oh, Westmore's here. You know? <laughs> and, make some uh, room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he wants to stand in the bench, oh, okay. in the bleach, in the bench <laughs> seats. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you were kind enough to let me, and I asked a, a few people, I think, in, in the first year of our show, I asked you if, if I could watch the dailies. And some people wouldn't let me. And you were like, Really? Yeah. I don't know why. Did you sneak up to his? Yeah, he'd go, Well, just, hideaway. you know, it's, you know, at lunch, I'd head up to your office and throw in, you know, the previous day stuff that I happened to be in just to sort of get an idea of like, well, don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But still did. Don't tell anybody. Is you. Don't, don't, don't say. Yeah. Mike, let me go. Yeah. No, no. I was, yeah. Where's Connor at? I don't know. Where that, were you? How did that uh, sneaky yeah. relationship develop? Then? <laughs> I literally asked him, you know, yeah. I was like, is it would be possible to, I know you get the dailies. Who said no to you? Someone had said no to you. Um, go with. Hair guy. Oh, really? <laughs> Hair guy. Uh, no, was his, no. Was his name Michael as well? Michael. Uh, Michael, yeah. Yeah. He said no. Um, I don't know who else would have them that would have been accessible like that. Um, Bob, Bla Bob Blackman. Bob uh, Blackman, right. but that would have been a bit of a hike. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two blocks. I got four, I got 24 <laughs> minutes now. My lunch is almost over, but I would just head up into your, your office yeah. and, and, How uh, and did look, you at, look at them. Was that the first season only? Or? Much of season one, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would get up there and... and um, I just like to watch myself. I'm familiar with uh -oh. Connor asking to watch the video. Yeah, yeah it's a thing. I mean, I, some right, people don't like it yeah. about themselves, but I, I use it as homework. Right. You know, again, it's truly, it's yeah. like, well, don't stand like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, uh, my, <laughs> off, yeah. my office, office was in the dryer building. Still did it. So. <laughs> and the, uh, the dryer building, where my first office up there was, you could, uh, I shouldn't even tell the story because nothing, I can't, I can't try to remember the name of the movie. Um, William Holden. Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. Okay, that's it. That up, oh, that's up, that's up, right upstairs we were. was the building where Sunset Boulevard yeah. was shot. It was William Holden's office. And if you looked out the window, you could see right down the uh, alleyway across the street. And this was the exact spot the camera was in. Yeah. When, the, when the original okay. movie was shot. And today, David's office is right down the couple doors oh, down really? from where David's mine was. Office, is it? Yes. Is it? God bless. That's, I love those stories. I love those stories. I mean, uh, we, there we were on stage 18. That's where Sunset Boulevard was shot, wasn't yes. it? And Rear Window, Hitchcock's movie. Uh, all of uh, Esther Williams' movies. There was yes. that yeah. pool beneath the, pool the stage. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They used for storage. Yeah. Hallowed ground. Yeah. Yeah. We were so lucky to work. Is Paramount your favorite studio? Can you say that? I would say uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I was around Universal, I said, for 11 years, but I was at Paramount for 18. And it's the first time in my career I ever worked at Paramount. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? It was, it was and you never left. And you never left. <laughs> no, not at the <laughs> end. Really. Last fan question from uh, Stuart Ross from Patreon. My son is a very talented mask maker, sculptor, and artist. What would you suggest he do to make the move to TV and movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where, where, are they, where are they from? It doesn't say. It doesn't, doesn't say? say? No. Um, Good question. <laughs> Ohio. Ohio. Okay. You know, the thing to do is, as far as coming to Hollywood right away and say, I'm here, where do I go? There are makeup schools where they do do make masks and things, but there's no guarantee of getting a job after you've paid thousands of dollars to do that. One place maybe to get started would be in local theater mm. and, and uh, just volunteer. In fact, many of the students or makeup artists that went through um, Face Off, instead of staying in Hollywood, they went back to Florida. They went back to Indiana 
and they have become the big fish mm. right. in their own hometown. Yeah, because a lot of, you know, of as we know, a lot of states like uh, Georgia and, uh, you know, that they have a good, great tax rebates for filming. And, and now it's time for Star Trek trivia. And Ooh. we're going to use Shannon Ryan's gift, which is our new buzzers. Hey, hey, thank you, Shannon. Yay. Thank you. Just Look at that. Michael out. gets to be the first guest with a buzzer. <laughs> And he's already looking at it going, that'd be a good alien thing. <laughs> An Australian thing. buzzer. <laughs> they're very a, red, cool. a red glowy thing. Yeah. yeah, they're neat. They're neat, aren't they? Also uh, received a Duke hat from Muhammad Noor. So I'm going to wear it for trivia. Oh. We've started getting hats. People want their own universities on the show. I think Muhammad Noor was on, uh, was he on the trivia, on the, on the virtual con we just did? Yes, he was. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 He's, uh, he's in cruise. Vegas uh, every year. He's a great yeah. guy. Yeah. Hey, Muhammad. Hey, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Hey, Thanks Mom. for the hat. <laughs> All right. All right. Sorry. Here we go. Uh, rules? We're good with the rules? I think we're good with the rules. We got them down, yeah. Great. Yeah. Question number one. The Ferengi first appeared in what TNG episode? <sighs> A, the battle. B, the last outpost. C, the perfect mate. Or D, the price. Who got that? You. I oh. think it was, uh, I think it's the, oh, God. Give me the, I think it's the battle. Uh, no, the outpost. I think the outpost. Gosh, yeah, I knew outpost. that one too. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Outpost, baby. Question number two. It's real, this competition. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. The Cardassians first appeared in what series slash episode? So series and episode. Oh, come on. A, A, Cardassians, DS9, season two, episode five. B, The Chase, TNG, season six, episode 20. C, Profit and Loss, DS9, Season 2, Episode 18. Or D, The Wounded, TNG, Season 4, Episode 12. Oh, damn. <laughs> Mine's uh, broken. Uh, uh, Mine doesn't work. B. <laughs> I was going to say. Is it the next gen one? The next gen. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Season yeah. 6. And Mark Alimo. Mark Alimo. No. <laughs> is that a no? Yep. That's a, then I think it's... Uh, the next TNG one. I think it's uh, the next TNG one, whatever that one was. Um, uh, Chris? Uh, what is it? Is it D, D? Was it D? It was D, the wounded. D, the wounded. Okay. Yes! yes! Michael. Really? Good man. <gasps> oh, Mark's pissed. Oh. <laughs> He's not used to losing. This is two weekends in a row. I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Times are a change. Uh, it's just entertainment. Remember that. <laughs> Michael isn't very confident of himself here. His finger isn't even on the thing. It's on the back. It's on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. He's good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. Question number three: The Gem Hadar first appeared in what DS9 episode? A, the abandoned, B, the changing face of evil, C, the gem hadar, or D, to the death. Oh, crap. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, go with the gem hadar one. Uh, that sounds, uh, that, might be, that might be like a little, uh, do you know trick, that's a, or, ruse? a little trickery. Oh. Uh, um, trickery. Oh, tri trickery. Oh, trickery. I don't even know <laughs> who they are, to be uh, honest. Final answer. I go What's with, I go with was yes. it C, Jen Hadar? Jen Hadar. Yes! Yes! Oh my <laughs> word, that gets a stress about. <laughs> this is a rare event. <laughs> Three zip. <laughs> and he's hitting it. <laughs> I said, I'm out of here. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is fixed. Good job. Uh, <laughs> Question number four. Name the actress who was not only a green girl on Enterprise, but the first Cardassian slash Bajoran hybrid. A, Cecily Adams. B, Sia Batten. C, Roxanne Dawson. Or D, Chase Masterson. Oh, I fucking, I could, I was, that mine didn't work. Cecily Adams? No. 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 <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What's B? Sia. Sia Batten. It's Sia. That's the uh, yes. Four Z pieces. This is only for entertainment. <laughs> I was lying. <laughs> lie, 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 lie. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the last question is not a multiple choice. The question is: In the episode "Let That Be Your Last Battlefield" 
from the original series, the characters Beale and Lokai with bicolored skin were depicted as wearing gloves all the time. But this was not a requirement of the story. Why were they always wearing gloves? Oh, you got it? Why were they always? I have no idea. Why would they always be wearing gloves? Because their little fingers would get little um, rips in them like Dominic gets on his head. Oh, no. Because uh, they couldn't. Wait, so you got a buzzer? Who's going to buzz it? Um, oh, Mark. Uh, Mark. Uh, because they couldn't, they didn't want to paint one of their hands black for continuity or for like getting makeup on everything or something. Hmm. Okay. No, well, it gets wise. Yeah. So just because of the makeup smudging. Makeup smudging. Make- well, that was. <laughs> he said, well, it was tough. You're a tough judge. All right. <laughs> but nevertheless. Nevertheless, <laughs> say it out loud. New car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yes. What do we play for? Uh, we are playing trivia for Jober Velasco, or as I was saying at the event, Jober. Jober. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Jober. Thank you, you are Jober. Our first, I think, legitimate proper winner. Yeah. You uh-huh. get a car. <laughs> <laughs> it's not big. Yeah, but it's a car. We give toy cars away. (laughs) (laughs) It's time to play Stuck on a Deserted Island with Connor Trenier. All right, all right, all right. You guys ready? Yep. All right, so, Michael, this is a a little get-to-know-me section. Uh, It's on a deserted island, comma, with Connor Trenier. Um, You're on a deserted island forever, and (laughs) you're allowed, you're given the Bible and Shakespeare's works. But you get to choose an author, their complete work, a dessert, like if you like ice cream, you get all ice cream, and your musician. Oh, and, and uh, cuisine. And, and cuisine. Yeah. And cuisine. What food would you like to take? It, yeah. It, like Italian, French, yada, yada, yada. So uh, if you, the complete works of what author would you pick? Um. J.K. Rowlands, is it? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I enjoyed them. Yeah. You take the Potter stories with you. Yeah. How about that? Mm-hmm. I read them all. I would not have seen that mm-hmm. coming. Yeah. Um, the um, musician, music. Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis. Oh, wow. Wow. Excellent. Also prolific. Uh, dessert. It's always going to be Christmas on the island. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. Oh, chocolate cake. Chocolate cake and Johnny Mathis. I'm getting a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and your cuisine. Uh, duck breast with a cherry sauce. Oh, yeah. Well, forever. So are we talking French? Forever? Yeah. Oh, you, French. You, you, French. Uh, uh, is that, Ch- is that yeah. French or Chinese? Uh, 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 duck breast. It's French, isn't it? I would say. It's French. It's a French, French dish. Yeah. But you, that's your favorite dish, is it? Dark hey, there's a lot, of, a lot of sauces involved with French food. So, yeah. 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 God bless. <laughs> All right. Well, you can come to my, my island. We'll, just, we'll swap recipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, God bless you, mate. Uh, that has been just an absolute treat. Uh, a real joy to see you again. Yeah. Looking so handsome and fit. And uh, hearing all your stories, pal, it's, uh, it's really been lovely. Uh, can't tell you. And lovely to see you again, Marion. Yes, yes. Lovely your walk down memory yeah. lane is top of my list. Yeah. Easily. I mean, honestly, Easily. I can, honestly, I can say with my hand on my heart, uh, and not to pick favorites, but this chat today has been, frankly, <laughs> this will stay with me for a, for the, for a lifetime. It yeah. really is. Well, I love you guys. I really do. Yeah. It's yeah. like I, I was looking forward to this ever since, you know. Oh. Thank you. Since I called you. Since you called me. (laughs) Yes. And we should thank, actually, a shout out to Susie Diaz. Uh, It was her birthday and uh, it comes up on Facebook for me. And I just messaged her to say happy birthday, doll. And uh, she hit me back to say thanks. And then we just got into a little chat and uh, and I was thinking of our show. And I said, I don't want to be, do you stay in touch with Michael? Um, Yes, Susie was married to Michael's son for a while, Michael Jr. Mm -hmm. And uh, she hooked us up. So it's, it's, uh, thank you, Susie. Yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you, Michael. No, thank thank it's, you. It's my pleasure. Man. You know? yeah. As I, uh, somebody was saying, asking me about, you know, when you run into each other, whatever, I says, you know, it's a reunion every time, like it, in Vegas. It every is. time you see a face, it's yesterday. It you is. You saw them. And it's, it's always worth a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Indeed. Uh, Indeed. To say hi. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah. Don't smudge the makeup. <laughs> Don't smudge your makeup. <laughs> On that note. Oh, yeah. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. Mm. Michael, we have this decoy Pinot Noir for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you yeah. very much. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, yes, you I are will. You're a red wine, aren't you? Yes. yes. That'll go yes. with your duck breast and uh, cherry sauce. That's right. <laughs> thank you very much. Was it Tim Ross that said he didn't drink red wine? <laughs> yeah. And the, oh, the one we got him he was said like, I'm bored with red wine. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, man is bored with red wine. He's bored with life. <laughs> uh, thank you, mate. Yeah, thank Absolutely you. Absolutely fantastic. Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon.